Let's get started. So, 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 today we are, actually, I'm going to get one more thing going. Where the fuck is that window? I can't see. I'm going to get all, all properly set up here. There we go. There we go. Uh, lower video qualities. Can't you uh, adjust that yourself? Oh, is Jake here? Yes! Hey, Jakey! Get this dick going in your mouth. I wish I could fit it. It's too big. I have a relatively large mouth, but it's still not big enough to fit Jake's entire package because he has a very large Italian package. Um, oh, yeah, I need to fix the title. What do we, what do we title this? Um, uh, Saddle. I keep smoothing. Live stream of the project from the P4 writing sessions. See, I'm I'm unprepared. I don't know. And no, we're not we're not sim racing. Doing music. The category is not a set of course. <laughs> music and performing arts. Hmm. There we go. Fixed. Fixed. Yes. Uh, make some synthy stuff. All right. I mean, today, today, what we are going to be doing is just sort of uh, take a look at uh, satellites from the writing session. So this song was super interesting because we we actually did Loon this way, um, and maybe incidentally that's why they had similar enough vibes to be the the closing songs on the albums, their respective albums. But the the this, this song was something that we sort of jammed in a room. We don't do that. I don't know if you guys know this. We don't have a rehearsal spot. We've been sort of bad with that. And it's just because we didn't have a, a spot to really do it in. So our, our practices are, are usually very utilitarian and short. And sometimes we don't even practice for tour, which I probably shouldn't admit. But um, we've never really had a chance to jam. It's kind of hard to set that up. So I was trying to approximate the best case of that by... Uh, setting up some some pedals and some rigs in my apartment when we were riding and just vibing out like you know whether we were smoking some weed or just chilling out or whatever but just trying to get a vibe going and just seeing what happens and then our ideas would sort of happen there and then once we've got this idea together then we'd be like okay now let's go to the studio and let's let's commit this you know uh, and that's how this song was kind of born is just this first section right here um, now this is the this is the writing sec section. I actually have the tracking session open or that's that's behind here uh, because that has a, a lot of stuff because we actually ended up writing some extra stuff in that session as well. So you'll notice that this intro we don't have that uh, droning note underneath it. I don't like this song now that I know it's a weed song. <laughs> Pretty good. Got me good. Um... Let's see how astute you guys are. Do you guys notice any, anything different about this? Let's play it again. Tell me, tell me if you notice something different about this. It was in that section. I mean, did, did you notice it? I, I wondered. I wondered if you guys would notice it. It caught me off guard because Nope, not the pitch shifting. Guitars. What about the guitars? Modulation on delay? No, I mean, um, let's see. Let's see if anyone gets it here. Scale played differently. What does that mean? No echoplex warble. Yeah, I mean, we did retrack it with the echoplex, um, but that's not the that's not the the difference. Guitars sound different. Well, it's gonna be. It's going to be kind of hard to uh, tell if you're getting it right, but basically uh, we changed this. 
So that actually is like a more, I don't know, theory, but more minor version of that, I guess. It goes, da da. We changed the chord a little bit on that second repeat. Here it just goes back, it's just like a loop of it, basically. Halfway through. Uh, and there are these little changes that we made, you'll, you'll get to see that version before we're done. Another interesting thing is that, uh, actually, up until... This part of the song... The heavy part... All the bass that you're hearing is the, uh, the Moog Minotaur. And it's pretty cool. Just kind of fills out the low end in this nice, uh, this nice way. And uh, it's actually doubling a lot of the bass parts um, after the fact with real bass. Gives it a lot like sub low. It's something I've been messing with, and uh, sometimes I'm just too lazy to program it. But um, it's really pure. Um, I've got it right here, actually. You guys can see it. It's just this little, this little thing here, and. Um, Let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah. It's this little, it's like a bass synth. Uh, it doesn't even have like a ton of range. Like you can't go that high with it. Uh, it sounds fantastic. It's huge. And it's a, it's a very pure sound. So like you'll get all the like the subs and the, the, the low end, just like this beautiful way you can like use all those frequencies. So um, that's, I think I used it to program the bass just on the, the first half just because it was easy, uh, but also sounded really good. So we just, I think we left it that way. And then for this, we're using like a pre-production version of Modern and Massive, which is uh, GGD Modern and Massive, which is not even loading correctly right now for whatever reason. It's an early build. Uh, it was loading at the time, obviously, so as <laughs> I could dial it in. Uh, it sounds good though, man. Like, like dynamically. This is like kind of our rock kit, and for like these lower velocities, like it was working well. So. We were basically just trying to recreate what we were jamming on the room. Um, pretty sure like Mark and Jake came up with these respective parts and I was just sort of filling it out with chords. Get this nice. I think I was playing, uh, <laughs> I think I was playing Persona 5 at the time and I was just putting Rhodes on absolutely everything because the music in that game fucking rules. We got obligatory mini log. The LFO on the pitch shift, you know. Or on the pitch, rather. And then moving on to the next section here. Now, you guys uh, might recognize this. Who recognizes this? I see people talking about uh, Anna 2 or ANA 2. It comes with that um comes with that uh slate slate uh digital all access thing. It's great. It's actually a really good synth. It's got a really cool uh arpeggiator. Did I use it on this? Why are we talking about that? Anyways. Yeah, Mark it's that Mark riff like so this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes we're just like, hey, like that riff worked perfectly. Let's let's integrate into that. We wanted to use that riff. Um I think it's like I think it's one of the, the, the coolest riffs that Mark's ever written. Um, and, uh, and I was like, this has to be like sort of a chorus vibe. Like that's what, that's what it sounds like to me. So I was just sort of trying to bring that to life. Uh, again, a little trick I like to use, just like double it with a, especially if you're doing cleans, like you double it with a piano or you can double it with a Rhodes, like. Like how good does that sound, right? And uh, for this, we're using, uh, was it the, the, the Spitfire uh, North 7 Vintage Keys, which is just my go-to. I actually have Keyscape by um, uh, Spectrosonics, and it's great, but I just always reach, always reach for the... Um, the, I am doing kind of a cool trick on this, though. Uh, if you guys know LFO tool, like, you'll probably see most people using this for, um, um, wait, did it just, oh, it just reset on me for some reason. 
well, anyways. Um, you can, uh, you can automate, uh, I think I had like a, a preset going here. Um, electric piano. Is that the wrong, why is this not working? Oh, it only works when it's, uh, when it's playing, I see. So you can use LFO tool to, like, create that, like, uh, ro rotating speaker sound, uh, or pan or whatever. But it only works when it's running, of course. Um... Anyways, it's a, it's a fun little trick without it. Still a great sound. Um, Persona 5 ass riff. Exactly. You're goddamn right. Man, how good was the music in that game? Who, who here has played Persona 5, right? Like, goddamn. Yeah, I'm, I'm like influenced by every JRPG ever musically. You know? Ass riffs. I'm a master of the ass riffs. You can quote me on that. Um... Do I play all the keys, parts that double the guitars, or do you auto MIDI conversion thing? I usually don't play. I'm not that good at actually playing, so I'll usually just program it in, or, like, what I may do is, like, play it in and then just correct the notes after the fact, but, um, this looks like it was probably programmed, because everything's kind of the same. I probably, yep, that looks like I programmed it for sure. Um, but that's a good little trick, so we brought that to life like that. Um... I'm trying to think what effect we use. We either use the, the, the Chase Bliss Tonal Recall or the DoD Rubberneck for that, for that delay there. Good pedal. Pedals into the axe effects are great. Got all these layers I totally forgot about. We haven't actually played this song live yet. So, I have a better sense of what's going on once we do that because, you know, after we're done... After we're done with an album, it's like you're studying for a test and you just forget everything that you've done. Like, it's all erased, so I don't remember how to play or even what's in it. But then once we, like, divvy up parts to, so we can play it live, then that's when you're like, oh, there's this part, and who's going to play this live, and who's going to play that? And invariably, there's always too much stuff, and we have to commit stuff to backing tracks. So, um, didn't even know there was all this stuff. Just for extra vibe, I suppose. Now that I'm listening for it, I hear it. It's kind of fun to like go through these projects and see what, what's been missing, you know? Or what I forgot about. So as we were writing this, I mean, we didn't know exactly what the vibe was gonna be, but it's like, you know, let's, let's stay on this quiet vibe, because I think like we always have this habit of like, hey, we're doing like a quiet part, let's go like straight into the heavy stuff or whatever. And it was, it, it was kind of an intentional thing to like really draw it out, um, which which I'm really happy with the way it happened. I know some people uh, probably think like it's it's too much. Um, I disagree, and also I think that this is gonna work really well live. Like that's that's my bet as well. Is like this vibe is gonna build in a certain way. Uh, I hope I'm right. You know, I hope I'm not wrong about it. Uh, I want this to be a good live song, but. Like, they'll build in a certain way, so that, like, after you're hearing, like, four minutes of, like, cleans and pretty sounds, like, when it kicks, it should kick so hard. That's, that's the, that's the goal, at least, you know? Um, can we get Nolly in chat as well? Sure, let's wake his ass up. It's probably, like, five in the morning over there, but whatever. All right, uh, let's look at some questions, and we have all these goddamn subscribers. Look at this. Thank you very much. Mike Porntoy has gifted a sub to Jake Periphery. Wow. What a, what a sweetheart. And what a great name. Um, and, uh, let's see. Going, oh. Tequila Poonstorm. Avenged Dragons, Nicholas 
DGD, not GGD. You should change your name. The Lambkin. Camp Flaufer. It's just fun saying these names. Relevant Squid. Fernie the Woe. Burton, ba Burton Banana. It says, she's space, I don't know how to say that. Darude Twitch Storm, sick. Thank you all for your subscriptions, guys. Oh, this is sick, like, we have a crazy amount of this. I can't, I can't even keep up with this. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll get back to these. I'm gonna get some, uh, some questions now. Um, Guitar saying, thank you very much for your donation. Hey man, just bought one of your pro sigs. Gotta say it's phenomenal. Love it. Oh, sick, dude. I, I really love that guitar. I think I mentioned this before, but like I have a, a, a pro series, like that blue one, it's back there, which I, I put um, a set of Ragnaroks in and, a, and an outfit with an Evertune. And that's like sicker than my USA with the Evertune. I don't know why, but it's just that one's got mojo. I've been playing that one a lot. So enjoy it. I think those guitars, the, the, the new pro series just came out. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, Fun fact is like, you know, we give feedback, like when there are QC issues or whatever, we give, I, I give the feedback to Jackson. They take it very seriously and they're flying, you know, it's done in the court factory in Indonesia and they fly out like every month or two and they're just basically on it to like make sure the quality is getting better. So all that feedback's really useful. It's something I take very seriously. Um, you know, I want my instruments to be good at all price points. I don't think just because you're, you know, in an $800 price point that you shouldn't be getting like a killer instrument. Uh, and man, they have just stepped up their game. Uh, like these, these new ones are, are really sick. Um, so thanks for your support, man. Uh, Blake C donated. Thank you very much, dude. Hey, Misha was so cool seeing you guys in Calgary for the first time last year. I hope playing in Alberta had enough show attendance for you to get you guys to come back. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, right now, I don't know what, when touring is going to happen again. Um, so hopefully soon, um, we like playing everywhere, man. Uh, that was a fun little run going to Canada. We went to all these places we've never been to before. Um, so knock on wood, it, it is unfortunately not up to us. It's up to our booking agent. It's kind of their job to determine what makes sense. Um, so fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if it get, gets booked, we will have a blast playing there. Uh, Jeff Santa music donated. Thank you very much. Can I show you the synth chill section? The one with the sick arpeggio. I think it was the prophet of the mood with the lo-fi drums. Love to see how you layered synth. So yeah, absolutely. I'm sort of going chronologically through this song. Sorry if I'm dragging a little bit. Um, just sort of talking about every little bit. But uh, we, we can we can go over absolutely everything. And the, when there's more synth stuff, I'll show you guys the patches and everything I'm using. Don't mind breaking this apart so that you guys can see how it was done. You know, feel free to rip off whatever you see. Like if you like the plugins or if you like the settings or whatever. You know, I'm that that's why I'm doing it. Feel free to be inspired by this to to use it for yourself. Uh, you're, you're asking, would you ever score a, sh a short or, or feature film? I mean, absolutely. With that, it's just you got to get the offers. I'm not getting the offers. Um, between your SIG and Racky's Limited Run Gray PRS, I went with the PRS because the finish. I'm sorry. It's all good, man. Like, Jake and Mark make great guitars, you know? Uh, we all have, like, similar enough tastes to where I really enjoy their guitars. And if there's another guitar that you like. You know, the thing I love about guitars and pedals and all of that is... There isn't, I mean, I guess there is brand loyalty, but like, how many guys do you know who like own one brand of guitar or like one brand of pedals? Like, my running joke is like, if you see a guy who's got like one brand of pedals on his pedal board, like run, because that dude's got dead bodies in his basement for sure, you know? So, um, it, it's great. You can, you can have good, like, even I have like a, a pretty crazy collection, even though like I am a Jackson signature artist, like I have other, other brands and they're very understanding because they're all a bunch of guitar nerds with their own collections too so don't sweat it dude do what uh do what's right for you i uh, need that matt sig guitar just to throw everyone for a loop hmm yeah i mean he is the best guitarist in the band so that does make sense um those black machine days you know it's so funny man like i i i only have one black machine left and that was the first uh b6 that doug built me um, and it's in the closet and it's, it's kind of beat up, but it's, it's, it's got a lot of character. I don't think I'll ever sell that one. I sold my B6 and I sold my B2, um, which I never thought I would, but they started to become so valuable that like, I was almost afraid to play them and they just ended up sitting in their case. It was a bit of a shame. The B2 went to, to a friend of mine, um, who I know is playing the guitar. So that almost makes me feel a lot better that that guitar is not just sitting in a case wasting away. Um... 
Who wanks more, you or Mac? I feel like I shouldn't be answering these questions, uh, but I don't know the answer to that. But it's probably me. It's most definitely me. I mean, if Matt or, or if Mark wants to get into uh, into the chat and and argue that, you know, we'll see. Uh, here, let's take a couple from YouTube. Even though I'm ignoring YouTube, I will not ignore YouTube. I'll, let's see if there's a good question anywhere. Um, anywhere on YouTube. We're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And there's nothing. Okay. Well, you tried. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, how about software latency and audio dropouts? I don't know. You tell me. I'm uh, computer specs. I'm using uh, an iMac Pro, the, the 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 base level iMac Pro. They had a pretty insane sale on one at uh, Micro Center at some point. Like me, Jake, and Dez, like all bought them <laughs> because we were just like, this is sick. Uh, all right. Um, you already know Misha pulls it twice on the daily. I mean, like, hey, you shouldn't shame people for uh, for jerking off because like it's a great way to clear your head, go to bed, and other things that rhyme with that. So you know, just, uh, just if if you're ever gonna make a big decision, you know, let's you know, rub one out, tug one out, whatever you gotta do real quick, and then and then you'll be clear headed, you know. Um. Anyways. Uh, Spitfire Audio has a contest for writing music. For a car chase scene, you can win every single plugin from them. The OneDrive. That's awesome. Post not clarity. Yeah, actually, <laughs> it's funny you say that because the working title for Blood Eagle is uh, Post Bust, which uh, uh, is exactly that. It's like Post, bu post Bust Clarity. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Wisdom Wank. <laughs> that's, Jake, that's Jake's contribution. Well, well done, Jakey Jakey. Um... How about three guitars panning in live concert? So I'm usually stage left, so I'm on that side. So I'll be in the stage left speaker. You're right. Uh, Mark will be the other side, and Jake will be in the center. But actually, uh, I don't know if Ronnie does this, but but Marquitis had it set up so that he could dynamically pan, and it was like sort of pre-programmed to our laptop so that like for solos, you know, because obviously for solos you want those to be in the center and would move the other guys to the side, or even on certain riffs where it's just appropriate. We went through all the riffs with him and he would like kind of like move it so we'd actually sort of move around the stereo field depending on the part of the song it's kind of cool ah there we go ronnie how do you do it did you do the same thing did you do the dynamic or did you just leave it alone it's probably fine i mean he just he would just manually move us to the center uh matt says i'm in slow mode i mean yeah uh should we take 10 seconds that's not too bad matt it's gonna be chaos RJ Sex Machine. Oh, we got everyone here. Daddy Ronnie's here. Yeah, we got all my peoples. Oh, I miss you guys. This is like the closest we're going to get to hanging out. Um, all right, moving on. Let's listen to more stuff. You can hear... So the stuff I programmed here is very basic. This is something I like to do with Matt because there's no point in me going too detailed with these with these drum parts. It's just sort of the basic accents. Because I just know that Matt will hear that and be like, okay, I know what to do. And then he can take it to the studio and like it'll just sound better and he'll play with that feel and, and, and he knows when to hold back. He knows how to hold back. So there's literally no point in me putting any detail into this programming. It's just wasted time. It's like, it's like right now we have a shorthand. Either, either there's something really specific or there's like a fill where I'm like, you know, I really like that fill. And if he likes it, he'll do it or he'll do something even sicker, you know? Um, but a lot of the times we could just do this sort of shorthand where it's like, all right, that's, that's the vibe. You, you just go do your thing, you know? And I know it'll be great. And this, I believe, is the arrangement uh, that that Spencer and Matt sort of approved. So we knew that that was the chorus. We knew. I, I don't think we made too many changes to that stuff. I think that all flowed kind of well. So we knew we wanted this to be the chorus. It's just literally the same thing again, right? Now this part's cool. 
This is a part that ended up being a theme, like it's actually the end of the song, so it's like a foreshadowing part. Though at the time, we didn't, we didn't have that ending section. You know, this was just supposed to be kind of a break. And... This is kind of fun. So I don't know if you guys mess with Nexus at all. I, I doubled this guitar part. I forget who wrote that. Um, it's a really simple guitar part. I just doubled, doubled it with this Nexus pluck. Which is definitely just like... Yeah, like, it's just like supposed to be like this, uh, this sort of house pluck sound, you know? And, and Nexus is like... If you don't want to ever deal with sound design, you just want like finished sounds and you want to start making like electronic music. I just have like the basic one. They sell you all these packs for it or whatever. I just have the the, the basic one. They had it on sale at one point. It's cool. Like, and, and I'll use it occasionally if I just want to throw a quick sound. But it's just funny that this is like just that that very basic patch. And it's like it sounds kind of like a like a, almost like a palm muted guitar in context, you know? We got very, very minimal strings. Again, this this whole part's just supposed to be very minimal. So we've just got... What library is that? These high strings sound good, I think. So these are, uh, these are orchestral tools. I think this is uh, Metropolis Arc 1. Or 2. It might be Arc 2 because it's going very soft. It's their soft library. Just very pretty, very pretty string sounds, right? And this is actually a mix. No, so we've got Mass, which is Spitfire's, like, sketching library. You can hear, like... That's kind of soft in there. I like to layer these ones. This is a really cool... So Spitfire Chamber Strings is one of my favorite string libraries. Uh, you know, it's it's not cheap and it's just strings, right? But it's a small it's a small uh, ensemble. Like, I think it's like half the size. And they have these uh, articulations like Flautando, which is like really soft. And you can kind of hear it's like kind of uneasy. And I'm cranking the volume because this is like really, really soft. So that's really pretty there. And I'm layering all those so that it doesn't just sound like one recognizable library. It's one of my favorite things. So this, I think, is from Metropolis Arc 2, which is like, Arc 1 was like their super loud library, like it has the whole, uh, the whole orchestra and everything. It's, and then Arc 2 is like the opposite, it's like everything's soft. So if you want these sort of softer sounds, that's a, that's a good library to check out. And then you blend them all together, and that sounds like... I think that's just a very pleasant sort of big string sound, you know? And this section's kind of interesting, because I wanted something kind of floaty. So I actually took just the tail end of, like, one of these takes. I did a fake loop, if you will, like, fake looper. And then basically turn that into a loop. And it's not even like perfectly in time or anything. Um, I think that's Mark just like swelling some chords here. So that just became this loop and we just had that and I sort of built stuff off of that. This, this sounds like it's got Shimmer on it. Yeah, Valhalla Shimmer. Which, if you guys don't have this, I mean, without it... Or actually, no, this already has Shimmer on the, on the raw file, so I'm actually not using the Shimmer in Valhalla Shimmer. But this is such a great reverb plugin. I, I absolutely abuse this. Um, Alright, so people... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thanks for that comment, Ronnie. Ronnie writes me these absurd comments. If you ever 
See, uh, and he, he felt the need to text me one right now. Uh, I'll probably read it live at some point and you can see how ridiculous it is. Um, so yeah, we've got the piano over this. We've got the strings. Again, if I had to guess, this is probably Woodchester. Yes, it is, because Woodchester is the best. I mean, listen to this. That damn piano is just so good. Uh, my buddy Will Bedford has this company, um, Fracture Sounds, which is... They, they just make these awesome plugins. And this is one of my favorite pianos, so this is all over uh, P4. Um, one thing I can do, which is really cool, is like you can like get these layers. It sounds like it's been run through like Strymon pedals or something. You can hear the tail on that. You can turn up the intensity. Just like instant ambience like that. Anyways, uh, going back to the project. That's basically the section here, right? This is an example of when these drums come in. This is what I sent Matt. So I knew I wanted this like slightly swingy, jazzy feel. It's kind of not what you'd necessarily expect over this part. But I was like, you know, just have fun with that. Just see what you can do. I did I did program some stuff here just because I wanted to get a feel for myself. And this is something that, again, it's like sort of extending this 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 uh, lower dynamic part. Like we knew we wanted it to go heavy. Old Misha would have just gone straight into like built into here, like probably done some guitar swells and just go straight into it. But I was like, you know, let's let's have this sort of fake out thing. Let's have that that really catch you off guard. Um, and it's all about building this theme. It's all about like really so like by the end of it, you should have it in your head, you know. So so it repeats long enough to sort of become somewhat. Infectious like COVID. Oh, I can't say that because it's on uh, YouTube. They'll demonetize everything. Anyways, let's uh, let's take a look at some questions here. Uh, and Holinath has give, gifted a sub to Bulb. I I don't know what that means, but thank you. I think that's a good thing. Greg, what does that mean? Uh, all these all these people have subscribed. Man, thank you so much, IKEA sales rep. Thank you. I love your store and your company. Um, Starks888 has subscribed. Kabuki1, Hyrulean Light. Oh, and Mike Porntoy is just gifting subs left and right. He's, he's gifted it to Ronnie. RJ Divine. That's right. Um, all right, let's take a look at some questions. Uh, TSXP just donated. Didn't ask a question. Thanks for the donation, man. You, you can ask a question. I will answer it. Um, Merkful donated. Thank you very much. Longtime fan since the BT band board. That's where I recognize that name from. I thought I recognized that name. And uh, Thrash and Burn Days. Yeah. Blue, blue BMW M Crew for life. Hell yeah. Just wondering if you've had an I've made it moment and what it was. Miss you guys at the merch table nowadays. Cheers, dude. So, okay. That's, that's interesting. I'm really bad with I've made it moments. I think like our career has progressed so gradually and steadily. Like there was never this like big break. There was never this moment. It was just very steady. And I actually like it that way. It's 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 manageable, you know? Um the 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 challenges that you face and and everything that you face is just sort of an incremental increase from before. It's not like this world-shattering thing. And and I quite like that. I think one byproduct of that is that it um I mean, think of it that, like if you're if you're working out or, or losing weight or whatever, 
you know, you might not see that change as much as other people who see the pictures like like three months apart. It's kind of like that, where I might have like a moment and we have some data like the last tour that we did. We went we went to London and we headlined to the biggest crowd that we've ever headlined to. And, you know, you have these moments like, like man, that's cool. That's special. But at the same time, I, I never felt like I definitely don't feel like we've made it. I feel like I'm more like the guy looking at the next 10 steps being like, man, where can we go? How far can we? Can we take this thing? I'm really afraid of resting on my laurels about anything because I think, you know, I've always had this fear instilled that like you can lose everything tomorrow. That probably should teach me to appreciate things more, but uh, I'm working on it. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I guess, I guess technically I've made it like, I mean, even just when we were touring in a van, I remember when that was the goal. It's like, oh, if I could just go around the country and tour in a van and not make any money, Right, but maybe not lose money like that was like oh i'll have made it or if we you know can finally get out of a van and into like a bandwagon or a bus or something like that then i'll have made it um and and i think once those moments arrive you're kind of like just shifting your your goals to the next thing um but uh i i definitely feel very fortunate like like very very fortunate for what we have don't get me wrong um but i think the growth has just been so steady that like it doesn't necessarily feel like there was one moment where it's like wow that was our big break or we won the lottery that night you know um you miss us at the merch table you know i miss me at the merch table because i really enjoyed working merch um you know before before uh before like we were touring full-time i worked at uh radio shack you know on commission and i really loved that job like uh, i think i was pretty good at it you know and you like you, you kind of make your own money depending on how well you sell and whatever I've always like selling stuff. I always thought it was a lot of fun. So I, I really enjoyed working the merch table. And then eventually got to the point where we, we became a bit of a distraction at the merch table. So we had to kind of stop because, you know, even though we wanted to meet people or whatever, like we'd have our, our merch person being like, hey, like, you know, you guys being here is actually taking away from merch sales because you're like kind of blocking people. and Everyone just wants pictures and they don't want it. So we had, we had to basically stop doing that. And that was kind of a bummer. Um, I, I, I would love to sell merch. <laughs> like that one show. That'd be a lot of fun, you know? People actually bought stuff though, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, RIP Radio Shack. That's actually why I left. Like, funny enough, like uh, the, the manager that that I had there, like, we, oh, he was so sick. He was such a great guy and he taught me so much. Um, and they fired him. This was so messed up, man. Like they fired him because he was like super senior and they were paying him a lot. Um, and they're like, oh, we could just like get this like brand new manager in there uh, and pay him a fraction because he didn't have any uh, seniority, a, fa a fraction of the pay. That guy didn't know what he was doing. It was a mess, and that store just kind of fell to crap. Then, and then I, then I quit. So that sucks. But um, taking the keys to a Lamborghini is usually pretty good. I made it, Mark. I guess, I guess you're right. You know, it's weird that that doesn't. Uh, there's something wrong with me. I'm, I'm definitely like, I, I'm, I'm fucked up in the head. And you know, we could have a whole session about that uh, another day. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean that I, that that was a, that was a that was a special moment for me for sure. Um, uh, are there any budget VSTIs you'd recommend? My God, yes. Uh, first of all, you guys are all sleeping on Smash and Grab. Like that thing is the sickest compressor, a GGD Smash and Grab. It is the sickest compressor by design because it replaced literally like a thousand dollars worth of compressors in nollies and, and mine mixes. It's what I use on everything. I think I even did a demo where I used it as like a two bus, which it wasn't even designed for, and it works super well for that. Like, and and it costs a fraction of like what I even was paying just for my uh, my parallel compression, my uh, my uh, soft tube fed compressor. So like that's a no brainer, and it's super easy to use because we have a, a an easy mode. Uh, there's a there's a free trial. You just need an iLock or an iLock account. Um, you guys are sleeping on that one. It'll make your drum sound so much better. Um, and uh, and Arzilla cabs, because people don't realize how much uh, cab sims make a massive difference. They like tweak like the preamp, like the most minute amount. Be like, oh, this is so much better. And it's like, dude, the cab sim, the right cab sim will make all the difference. Anyways, uh, that that's uh, that's. <laughs> Matt says Trackhawk is faster than Lamborghini. Actually, Matt's Trackhawk is about to be faster than the Lamborghini because he, he's about to get it supercharged. I love that he's going down this rabbit hole because, like, when he got the car, he's like, no, 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 700 horsepower is more than enough. You know, I think it took like a month for him to be like, what do you think of this supercharger kit? I was like, I like it. That's very cheap power, pal. I think you should do it. 
If you think that Matt should supercharge his track hawk, please say so in the comments. Um, <laughs> cab IRs are everything. J JG1 Trev 5150. Thank you for saying something smart. And you have 5150 in your name. So you must know Tone. Um, yes, Matt, you must do it. Do it, pussy. Uh, please don't dead it yourself. Jake seems to think that our fast cars are going to dead it us, but then he wants a BMW i8. Should Jake get a BMW i8? If you think Jake should get his BMW i8, and he won't dead himself, he's a good driver, please say so in the comments. Uh, Jake has Jake has a Kia Optima, which I think is a surprisingly good car for the for, for the money. Like that car is it's like quick and nice and comfortable and really inexpensive. Has like the best warranty ever. I actually think Kia Optimas are pretty sick. Uh, but you know what would be sicker is if he also had an i8. Am I right? Billionaire doors. Um, let's see. Supercharged the Trackhawk. Yeah, had a boy. Uh, let's see. We got some more donations here. Guys, put on a hell of a trio show in Silver Spring. Took my wife. It was the first show of that type that she had been to, and she loved every second of your show. I was trying to get you guys to throw or something, but she was too short. <laughs> Thank you. I've been banned. Thanks for the donation. And I mean, that's not really like a question. That's just a hilarious story <laughs> yeah i mean we tried to throw the picks out that show was special by the way um you know uh, spencer was incredibly sick and and had to sit that one out we played as a trio which is not my favorite thing to do i remember going up on stage and like kind of dreading it i remember like we were all like all right you know like let's just make the most of it let's just try to you know when we when we think like a show's vibe is going to be off or something like that like in my head i'm like okay you know what Let's make the most of it. I, I may not move around as much. I'm just going to try and play as well as possible and just try to, like, make it sound as good as possible and just try to make the most of it so that, like, you know, because it's nobody's fault. Like, everyone who's there, like, they didn't do anything wrong. They deserve a good show. So it's like, all right, well, you know, if our vibe isn't going to be, like, as as crazy or normal as good, then, like, I'd, I'd like to put on a really good sounding show. Instead, that was one of the most insane vibes and crowds that, like, I, like that is, like like, like, top five for me, like... I will never forget the, the vibe that night. It was crazy. And then what happens is I start running around and then we all get silly and we drink way too much. And, you know, I probably didn't play very well. But my God, that was... That ended up being, like, one of my favorite shows of the tour. Um, and it just goes to show, you know, you, you don't don't give up. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I, I went in with a plan and, and things uh, went completely differently. But that was definitely a very memorable show. I didn't expect it to. So, you know, thanks, thanks to everyone for really... Uh, Helping us have a great time. Uh, Grabin Burger donated and said, "Inertia's remastered when for head." Uh, I I don't know, man. That's that's not that's not good. <laughs> I don't know. I like that that initial idea, and Spencer actually re-recorded vocals for that and sounded really good. But I, I don't know. It's one of these things where like we kind of want to move forward, and that was like part of like a whole suite of ideas. Maybe someday, you know. Maybe someday. What model, uh, we, Hayden Headlights donated and asked, what model IEM, IEMs do you use? Oh, and why is Jake texting me? What does Jake want? Oh, great. He sent me, this is, yes, I'm interrupting this. I don't know why Jake sent me this. Jake, can you explain yourself? Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Ronnie recorded Masamune. Sick. Yeah, we played Masamune that night. I forgot. I forgot a lot about that night. Inertia ass, the one I did vocals for. Yeah, definitely not re-recording that. <laughs> what do I use to stream the Cubase audio? I use, um, uh, what's it called? Wirecast. Seems to be working finally. It only took three years to get it to work. Um, anyways, uh, I was answering someone's question. The IEMs that we use, you just ordered A6Ts and could not be more excited. I think that's a, the 64 audio. P4 has been on repeat since it came out. So we use we use uh, 64 audio. I'm pretty happy with mine. You know, we endorse them. Um, it's interesting because I I don't go for the hi-fi ones. Uh, this is a lesson I learned, by the way. I, I do tend to run my in-ear monitors kind of high. Um, so for people who don't know, we use in-ear monitors. They have our own mixes. We have our click. We have everything in there. 
Uh, it's super, super handy. It's also one of the most depressing things in the world. It's the reason I will never think that I've played a good show, because you're hearing stuff in the most insane detail, and I'm hearing mistakes which probably you guys aren't hearing, and they are just blaring in my ear, and like, my soul is dying every time it happens, and I'm like, looking at you guys, and like, making up narratives, like, oh, he saw that, he hates me, he, he knows I suck, and he never wants to listen to my band again, or something like that, you know? And it's just, it's, uh, it's torturous, and I need to work on that, and I will. But uh, when I want to torture myself, I recommend the 64 audios. I think that I think I have the A6. I don't think I have the A6Ts, but I have the A6, the 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 precursor, and they're actually rolled off in the top end, which might sound bad. But guess what? At volume, that's great because I used to have a hi-fi set of uh, I think uh, it was a ACS. They were they were wonderful for like listening or whatever. And then when you crank them, you just go deaf. Because you don't need all that high frequency information. So actually, these are like very mid rangey But as a guitarist and the way I like to set up my uh, my mix, I actually quite like them. And, and I think it's probably preserved my 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 hearing a little bit because it's not like blowing it out with all this hi-fi top end. So yeah, I think that's probably a really good call. I think the A60s are like better. Um, let's see. Uh, is Sahu Space donate? Oh, thank you very much for for that donation, man. Gas money for the for the performante, uh, the P formante. Been a fan since P1. Was amazing getting to finally see you live at the Masquerade in February. Ferrari or Red Bull this season, if it ever happens. Eyeing anything for the watch collection at the moment since used prices are dropping. Great questions and things I love to talk about. We're talking about Formula One. I'm sorry, guys. You will have to put up with this, but I got a Formula One question and a watch question. Ah. Oh. You know me. You understand me. Okay, so Ferrari or Red Bull this season? That's super interesting. Um, Ferrari seems to have lost a little bit of pace, and Red Bull seems hungry. Man, I would, I would fucking love it if Red Bull were was beating uh, Ferrari at non-Red Bull tracks. You know, like not Monaco, not Red Bull ring. You know, not the usual suspects. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you What do you guys think about uh, about any Formula One fans in here? Um, if I think they're talking about the season starting in Austria, maybe, um, man. And you know, with a shorter season, it does make like the wins that much more. So it's like, if Red Bull does win away a, a race, then, then it means that much more if there's like eight races as opposed to 21 or whatever. Uh, I'm definitely rooting for Red Bull. I'm also rooting for, for my boy, uh, banana Leclerc because ah, God, I love that. I love my little Harry Potter and dude, he brought it to Vettel. Vettel, I know people want to shit on him. Vettel is a fantastic driver. Yeah, he hit a little bit of a slump. He was a little inconsistent. But, dude, what does it say that this, like, rookie comes in and is just showing him up? And is keeping a cool head? Is is arguably performing slightly better than him? I'm like, you know, if it wasn't for Bahrain, like, he would have won that race. It's like, uh, or the, the engine problems. It's like, that, that kid is just, that kid's on fire. Like, uh, I... I <sighs> This is the good thing about F1 is you can root for everyone. So I am rooting for everyone. But it would be great to see Red Bull be up in that second slot, not in the third slot. Um, and, and Ferrari is looking a little bit slower. But who, but who knows? That was just testing. You know, they looked super fast last year, and then they didn't have the pace. Um, let's see. Lost in F1. Uh, yes. Check my phone. Check my phone. Why am I checking my phone? Uh, oh, God. Thanks. No, I'm not posting that. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay jake <laughs> jake sent me what i thought was just a picture of <laughs> a bee but it's not just the picture of a bee i don't know if this shows up let's see <laughs> let's see if you guys could can you see this can you see this is what this is what my guys send me like this is what i have to deal with This is, this is just absurd. Um, yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, Matt, I'm not playing that video. I'm not even going to click on my phone. I know exactly. It's, it's going to have poop in it, and I don't want to see poop right now. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, oh, on the watch collection. Any watch guys here? Um, so I, I've. I really, really want a, a, a Rolex GMT. Obviously, a very expensive watch. Obviously, an absurd amount to pay. But they're dropping in prices. I actually think they'll be like kind of solid investments. Um, 
Especially if you can get in the lower prices. I'd probably get a Batman if... Uh, I'm waiting. I think they haven't hit their bottom yet. And I think it'll be like... It'll be like buying a nice stock that you can wear. Because, you know, you'll get it on sale and then should shoot back up in value. Because, you know, Rolex is crazy right now. Some crazy stuff. But, yeah, that's probably what I have an eye on. If I find a really good deal on a Batman GMT um, with a Jubilee bracelet, bracelet I, I will probably jump on that one. Um, you know, even if I have to, like, sell some gear... To um to to fund it like it'll probably be like a wise financial dis decision believe it or not, um so yeah good good little watch tip there, um. Uh, Delinquish says was going to ask a question about routing but realized I'm an idiot and fixed it. Honestly, a massive inspiration for my writing and goals in life. Keep up with Horizon stuff and GGD. Adore it all. Much love. You absolute. Huh? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Delinquish. I appreciate it. Um. GGE0H. I don't know how you say that. GGE go. GGO. Donated. Thank you very much, dude. I remember hanging out with you at your merch table when you guys played at the Crazy Donkey on Long Island like 10 years ago. Oh my god. Blast from the past, dude. That's that's awesome. Some dude asked to play your Bernie Rico Jr. and you immediately regretted it when he started showing off his sweep skills. I don't remember any of that. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, t that would have been like 10 years ago. God. Wow, how time flies. It's wild. Alright, what is Jake sending me now? This better be important. Yes, so good. Okay, could you see it, Jake? Could you see it on the stream? Um, this is why I want to have my guys tag, tag teaming these streams, because they, they, they help you guys get the good content. You know, the rest of this stuff's boring anyways. We all wanted to see that picture, didn't we? Um, Shred shot. Oh, the regular donator. I know this name. I know this name. Thank you. Thank you again for the for the donation and the question. Do you always use the S sixty one Mark II for keys, or do you use an S eighty eight Mark II or something else for an eighty eight key? No, I don't mess with the eighty eight key stuff. Their weight is too big. If anything, I want something smaller. I was actually I was actually thinking about doing this. Like Spencer does this, and I think he got this from from Taylor. Um, like, I don't know if you can see this, like, I just have this little table here. I was thinking about, like, even downsizing to, like, using this as a controller with a sustain pedal. And then, like, just having racks with just my, uh, my studio gear in it and no table. And it was just, I was, I was experimenting with that. It'll take some setting up, but, like, I want to see if that's good. Be less re reflection for the monitors, but it'll just be less stuff. Might be kind of a cool vibe. I might try that out. What do you guys think? I don't know. But, um... Can I run through the guitars, amp sims, and IRs used for the song? GGZilla IRs are far superior than ML by a long shot. The feel is unreal. I'm really glad that you like the GGZillas. I can't tell you how much work Nolly put into that. Like, it's been years. He, like, he shot a whole bunch of things and then, like, figured out something how to make it, like, 5% better and just reshot everything. Like, the dude's insane when it comes to this stuff. And, like, I, I get to be the, 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 the beta tester guinea pig, and I'm just like, dude, like, I cannot wait. I've been using these IRs. Forever. I don't know if I was using it on this because this was a writing project, but I'll show you on the tracking project next um, what we were using. And uh, for the guitars, we were using the 5150 on the, the Axe Vex 3 with just like a boost, you know? Um, I think I reamped after the fact because I think I tracked it with a Friedman. I didn't really like the way that was coming across. All right. Um, let's quickly get through these questions and I'll show you guys the heavy part of the song. Um, Sinister, thank you for the donation. I know you're currently working on Sheet Happens on the P4 transcription, but is there a chance there will ever be one for P2 as well? Yes, we are working on it. It will be there soon. We're really bad with the tabs. I know, I'm sorry. None of us tab ever, and it's just something we have to rely on other people for, and then we, you know, check it out. And, I, you know, thank God for Sheet Happens, because otherwise you would, guys would never get tabs if they weren't figuring that stuff out for us. Uh, the Well Lubed donated oh the, thank you so much man that was a crazy donation i was also at the silver springs uh, also at silver springs screaming at you guys from balcony to your right what was it like having a sales job and balancing music doing the same right now um i so here's what happened is you know i went to i went to university in in toronto because that's what you were supposed to do like i thought i didn't have any idea what i was going to do i was very unhappy i kind of had a mental breakdown and i was like calling my parents on the phone crying just being like look i'm so miserable i don't know what i want to do i don't want to do anything in school like i don't know what to do and they're like look you can come home and you can live live with us but you're gonna pay rent you're not gonna use this as an excuse to be lazy you're gonna pay rent we'll charge you like they 
I, I don't think they charge me that much. They, they charge me like four or five hundred bucks a month to live in the basement. And uh, they said that that would only be if I had a full time job. They said as long as I held a full time job, they would rent me, you know, uh, a room in the basement. And I could I could do that. And then whatever I wanted to do in my free time, I could do. And, and I was like, that sounds great. And honestly, I was really happy with that setup because I was working at Radio Shack, which I, I walked to work. It wasn't a very far walk. And um, so I didn't I didn't need a car or anything like that. And uh, and I was able to, like, just keep all my money. And I just basically my only bill was just paying my parents rent. Uh, and uh, and I and I worked there. But because it was a sales job, like I and because I, I tended to be pretty good at it, like I didn't have to work five days a week and eight hour days. Like I was doing like four days a week and it would be six to eight hour days. And then the rest of the time I was just recording the whole time. And honestly, like because I record a lot late at night, uh, <laughs> there'd be a lot of times where I just wouldn't get any sleep. I'd just like take an Adderall, <laughs> like make it through the day. But, you know, I had more energy back then and that worked. And I was really happy with that setup. I was like, man, if this is what I do for the rest of my life, this is really not that bad because I like my job and whatever. So, I mean, I didn't I didn't have a girlfriend like I kind of swore off having a girlfriend and all that kind of stuff. Like I didn't really do anything other than music, but not because it was maybe because I felt like I needed to give this like a fair shot, but it was also just because like I wanted music to be the focus and I was so happy that like I could spend as much time as I wanted to do music sort of guilt free. Um, and, and I don't know, that's just how I approached it. But like, yeah, that's, uh, that it, I don't know if that's like a life or if that's balance right there. It was like, I was either like working my job or working on music, but I don't know that that's something that made me very happy at the time. Uh, prob snob BSC says, uh, what do you think of Tesla? I think they're a really cool company that make really cool cars. I think Elon Musk is a disruptor. I don't necessarily feel great about the Tesla stock that I have because he seems to be able to just tweet and crash it. I think he's a really smart guy who should maybe not be the face of that company. Um, and uh, I think the the uh, after talking to, to Matt Farah, I think the Tesla Cybertruck is a scam. Uh, and potentially at worst they they run ponzi schemes and their cars are not solvent but with that said i actually think that the model 3 is a really sick car so you know you can kind of love it and criticize it as well uh but i like disruptors i like that tesla exists i like that they put everyone you know on their toes there is a bit of a cultist attitude there you know like tesla fans love tesla to a fault but and love elon musk to a fault it is what it is. The the market has kind of decided on that. I mean, like, I guess the Tesla stock has bounced back up too. I, I don't, I just don't understand that company. And so it, I'm a little apprehensive, but you know, whatever. Uh, cool. Uh, let's look at a bit more of the song and I'll, t I'll take more questions because I'm sure a lot of people are tired of uh, hearing me talk. So we have this, this loop here. And this builds into this heavy thing. So, fun fact, I wrote this riff and it was like a total vibe riff and I was like, I just want it to sound like Carnival. Like, this is just, like, let's just rip off Carnival about as hard as we can. Like, Sound Awake era Carnival, because I fucking love that band. And, like, even the guitar tone is, like, all, like, kind of fuzzy. It's not, like, genty, you know? It's got an octaver on it. And then we layered it with, like, two more. Like, how gross is that? That's second position with octaver. I think maybe a little fuzz. I even wanted there to be a little bit of noise on that that uh, that break there. And it's not track tight at all, and I just thought it had a lot of vibe, you know. Like. That's like the kind of part like I'd want to play drums on, you know, like I just felt like that would be a really fun part. Um, 
So yeah, that's the that's the the carnival rip off riff. Uh, it totally just vibed on. It was not even written. It was just kind of like this is this is kind of what feels right. Um, logically leads into the quote unquote third chorus. It's like that 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 Mark riff is so beautiful. It's like it has to come back heavy. It's kind of a tricky one to bring back as a heavy riff though because. It's it's actually like finger picked at some certain parts. So I had to like divide it up into like the the root notes and the the higher parts. Um, so you can hear like that's just like the 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 higher notes. You're not hitting the root notes. They get in the way. And that's a sub thirty seven with a little bit of portamento on it. And this sounds like it's got Valhalla Shimmer on it. Or... It's got some Shimmer effect. I probably used the Shimmer pedal then. I don't know what I used, because it's just captured as audio there. Um, this is Serum here. Probably doubling that. You can see this is like muted audio, so this went out to the synth and I captured his audio. Uh, but then I can just transfer that to another track and then now... And this is where it gets kind of messy. Again, avoiding the, the root note. That's a mistake. <laughs> that's not supposed to be like that. Whatever, you can't hear it. And it's a mistake that's double tracked, so maybe it was intentional? I don't know. Again, using that kind of gross, like, four tracks, octave, makes a second position in, in the, the regular. So this whole section is supposed to sound pretty big. I really like what the synths add. And, you know, this is one of these tricks is, um, if you use synths, like, this sound may not sound super impressive. And this stuff, it's just kind of like, like run of the mill, like there's nothing like that great, like you'd be like, oh, that's a synth sound, it's nothing great. But in, in context, it's like, it works really well. And sometimes you just want to dial these things for the mix, not for it to sound cool, but like that, that works really well. So that's just an important little tip to remember. I was asking, how is this demo so clear with all that synth processing? So, so show you the bus. I mean, um, let's see what's on the bus. I don't know what's on the bus. Yeah, I guess, I, have you guys seen, the, you haven't seen the master bus. So, let's see, we've got like a little EQ, which is the basic first move. I, I do top-down mixing, so I usually mix into my master bus, which I know probably angers a lot of people, but whatever, I like it. Um, so, yeah, you know, just do the, um, the high pass. Boost a little at 100, because it needs that. Scoop a little here, because it needs that. And boost the top end, right? That's just your first move. It's my favorite uh, two-bus compressor. And it it probably works the best, because I'm mixing into it, of course. But um, but I do like this. It's an SSL. Um, and I have the high-pass filter here basically set to ignore the kick. Like, only activates a little bit, but then you're going to hit about minus three on the snare. And it's kind of just the way I have this thing set up. It's supposed to, like, tame the snare a little bit. It would be way, way more pokey, like, have way sharper transients. Uh, this is uh, 
uh, my buddy Ehrman's least favorite thing that I do ever, uh, which is I put virtual tape machines on it. It's a tape saturator. Sounds clearer without it. Sounds slightly bigger with it. You can take it or leave it. I kind of like it, so I left it. Um, this is... I don't even remember doing this, but this... Actually, this is probably just to create a little bit of space in the mix for the bass, it looks like. Because what I'm doing here is I'm doing a, a mid. It's only affecting... So this is like kind of more advanced stuff, right? But it's affecting the, um, the, the, the mids and leaving the sides alone. So you can do this with, uh, with Q2 and Q3s. You can do mid and side, or you can do left and right and EQ them differently. Um, so like, for example, like one thing that you can do, and one thing I've started to do more is like take actually like the low frequencies out of the, the stereo, um, signal because like, let's see, I'll show you how to do it. So like you do this stereo. Now you take this out. The bass kind of pops out more because now the bass is just in the center. Like you don't really need all that low end on the side. It can kind of clean up your mix. So you can get a little bit more space, right? Um, this is a Nolly special. He, I sent him like a mix one time. He's like, hey, I made a little EQ for your master bus. I'll give it a little bit of space. And it's just like these little moves, but he's doing little different moves to the left and the right signal. They're kind of different. They're boosted and cut in slightly different places. And it kind of widens the sound of everything. <laughs> It gets rid of that, that mid gunk a little bit and then like, yeah, it just widens everything and again, mix into that. And then Pro L, I actually prefer, I don't know why, but I actually prefer Pro L over Pro L2 um, for, for uh, rock and metal stuff. It's just, I use it in dynamic mode and I'm using the limiter in a way that it's basically like just chopping the rest of the snare transient out, like really taming that, gluing everything together. I'm not aiming for this I mean I obviously don't want it to be too loud but I really just want everything to be glued together uh, and that's my goal so I, I do use my compressor and my my limiter in maybe a slightly different way but because I do top-down mixing because I mix into them you can sort of um, use them in these these kind of strategic ways that would be hard to sort of plan around if you weren't already doing that on the front end so hopefully that makes sense I don't know if that was a useful look at the um, the, uh, the the whole two bus situation that's happening here. There's nothing too crazy there. I mean, there's a couple cool tricks, but uh, feel free to steal them and use them for your own. And I think uh, you know this video will be on YouTube, so you could just steal all the settings for yourself. Um, can you solo out each of the guitars in the big layered octave distorted section? Sure. Uh, like like this this section here. To bring that to the center. The other side is just another take with the exact same tone. And then this is the other layer that's going on there. Let's bring that to the center. What an interesting tone, right? So that's second position, split inner coils. I might have put a fuzz in front of that. There's something like kind of making it kind of gunky there. And uh, it's the split inner coils give it that like scooped quality. And then the, the octave sounds crazy on it. Like, it's just messy. And like that, that's what I was going for. I just wanted a really messy full guitar tone. And they actually tend to mix very well with like bass and like as long as you leave space for it for drums and all that. So... Let's see if I'm using my uh, multiband trick on the guitars. See, I don't remember what I was using on this because let's uh, let's explore. Take a look. Where where are my guitars? Oh yeah, I am. So just you know, this is my guitar EQ. It's nothing much. It's just to get to sit. And then this is this is a cool trick. I mean, this is something that I'm pretty sure like Andy Sneap uh, popularized or maybe even invented. But um, this is a multi-band compressor, which sounds super complicated. And 
basically like rather than comp compressing the whole thing, it's just compressing the frequencies you choose. I'm choosing these frequencies that tend to exist in the palm mute area. And I don't know where we've got palm mutes. Let's see, probably towards the end. But those are not the kind. So palm mutes have a lot of low end and sometimes it can get the, the low end to be a bit, it'll bloom in this like, woo, you know, and, and kind of take over the mix. This basically just keeps it in check rather than EQing that out. So it's permanently out. It's there all the time. And then when it becomes a bit egregious, it'll compress just those frequencies down. So it's a very non-invasive way to get a little bit of control in your mix. I saw someone saying something, you know, how do you get space? It's little tricks like that. They'll, they'll go a really long way, right? Um, yeah, let's look. So... Back to uh, the carnival riff. We got my post Rocky lead layer on it. Let's put the delay in front of the, the distortion. This does have Valhalla on it. Shimmer. See an interesting comment here. There's a guy who seems to think that P3 sounded bigger because it was released on Sumerian. Please don't confuse this for criticism. I just enjoy critical listening. I don't think that you know how this works because the label has nothing to do with the mix. We, we mix all this stuff ourselves. And if anything, I think like P4 is objectively a bigger sounding album because P3, we were going for like this like really natural thing, like minimal, minimal use of samples. And P4 was supposed to be this like kind of dark, big thing. So maybe like where you're listening or referencing is, is not that accurate. But on top of that, lab labels, at least in our case, have never had any say on anything. In fact, one of the big parts about our deal with, uh, with Sumerian and all the labels that, that we were with at the time was that they had no input on anything, you know? Um, there's a lot of labels out there that will have deals where they can put in clauses that basically, if they don't like their, they don't like your album, they can threaten to shelve it. Meaning they just don't put it out. You've paid for it. You owe the money for it. It never comes out. It can really fuck bands. We made sure that there was nothing like that. So we have full creative control. In fact, so much so, um, Sumerian started to learn this after the while. This, and I think they started to trust us a little bit too. But it's like, we, we wouldn't send them anything. The first time they heard the album was when we were turning in the final master so that they could start getting it released, like get, starting promo to, to, to release it. Um, so they not only did have no, no input on the writing, but the mix, every, everything was already done by the time that, uh, that they ever heard it for the first time. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, that was our deal. So they were obviously cool with it. Like there was no animosity or anything like that. Uh, it was just, that was the, the, how it worked out. So, yeah. Um, I honestly think P3 is one of the best mix and mastered metal albums I've ever heard. You know, P3, I think is a really cool mix because of what we were trying to go for is it's supposed to be like this super, like Normally, most most albums need samples to kind of get them where you're trying to go. That was a challenge for us. It was like this internal challenge. Like, like Nolly and I were just trying to see, like, is there, like, is there a way to not use samples or use minimal samples? Like, I don't think there's a snare sample on that. I think there's kick reinforcement with the existing sam sample, just you know, for the for the heavier parts, the double bass parts, so it actually cut, cuts through. But it has like none. It has like no samples. It's like it's like as about as natural. And like it was Nolly really trying to push himself and see what he could do. But ultimately, I do think samples will make an album not only sound better, but it, in some ways, paradoxically, this is the thing people don't realize, is when you have distortion and you have all this stuff, you can actually make your drum sound more fake in all the manipulation you're doing. So paradoxically, I think well-applied samples, and especially if you're using like high-quality samples and multi-samples like we were using with, with P4, the drums can actually sound more natural and more real with samples than without them, which I know sounds so weird, 
but it's true. And there's a lot of producers out there who would back me up on that because they use samples like crazy and you'd be like, wow, those drums sound so natural. Uh, great example, Sound Awake by Carnival. Like that definitely has samples on it, but it sounds like real drums. It sounds so great, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the P3 was just like kind of a challenge for ourselves just to see what we could, what we could do. I'm, I'm really happy with that album and the way that it sounds. But uh, it ended up being a lot of work because of that. And I still think in some ways, like some aspects of the drum sound more realistic on P4, even though that has more samples. So it's just this weird trade off, you know? Um, Nolly had a snare room sample as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, he probably, you know, snare room, snare room is a big, that's a big sample trick, you know, because you're not, you don't even think you're really hearing the, the, the sample, but room informs so much. Like, uh, let me see if I could just turn off the rooms on this. That's what I've got there. It's not as present in this one. It would be definitely more present in the uh, the beginning. I use a lot more room on my uh, my more recent stuff. Like everything just gets up close. It's not a bad sound. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Artist in the Ambulance uh, by Thrice like kind of famously has like little to no room sound. You know, it's like a super direct sound. But I've been I've been inching more towards more and more room sound. And then you need a very good room sound for it to be good. So yeah, that's something that would have been mixed in. Um, let's see. Misha loves the snare on Saint Anger. Can I tell you guys something about that? Like. I, I, that was probably one of the, St. Anger was probably one of the first albums that like I watched the making of and I was so hyped for it and I was so bummed <laughs> by that album <laughs> and like when I think I like downloaded the song, like, like a leak of the song and I, I remember being like, oh, this must be a fake leak. Like they're probably doing this to fake with people, like fuck with people. Cause they were, you know, they were like anti Napster and all that kind of stuff. I was like, this is great. This is like such a good troll. Like I thought that, that, you know, cause sometimes it'd be mislabeled songs or whatever. Or, like it'd be like trolling. Right. And I thought that St. Anger was a troll. I was like, there's no way that Metallica with all that money and all that expertise. And like, you know, I'd seen what had gone into that album, you know, like that, that would be the mix and that would be the snare, you know? Um, uh, so <laughs> that kind of caught me off guard and I was like, oh no, that, that really is it. So I was kind of bummed by that, but yeah, anyways, we're still talking about it today. So obviously that did work, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> there's not a lot of other, uh, there's not a lot of albums from that era that, that kind of, uh, get memed on 20 years later, 25 years later. Um, let's see, let's get a few, a uh, few more questions here. Uh, Dr. Dro is in the house, donated. Thank you very much. Hey, Misha, I've been a fan of the band since 2010 when one of my friends showed me P1. Awesome. My question is, I struggle with rapid staccato riffs like the one in Face Palm and lots of other songs. Any tips for how to practice and get better at that? I mean, it's a bit of a technique thing. It's something that, like, Mark had to learn. Mark was not good at that when he, when he first joined the band. He might even be a good person to ask how he developed it, but it becomes very... It, it, the, the placement of your right hand is everything, especially with our style of music, like where your palm muting, uh, your, where your palm is sort of resting on the bridge and the strings and all, it makes such a big difference. I'd experiment with that and just muting with as many parts of your flesh as possible. If you're Jake, then you can use your big old dick, but the rest of us have to use both of our hands and like the palms and whatever. So like you, you use the gate to sort of help you as much as you can without choking out your sound. Um, and then you can uh, move your, your 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 palm up and down to find a, a spot where you're not choking out the sound and using whatever parts of your hand that, that you're not using to fret a note to, to try to mute as much as possible and then put tape on the, the you know, on your guitar, especially if you're tracking, you know, do whatever you got to do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that you just have to practice. You just have to kind of be aware of what where the sound's coming from and how you can mute it. You know, that makes sense. Um, David BTF, thanks for the donation. Probably just be Mercedes again and again next year since they postponed the new rules. I mean, yes, for first place, obviously Mercedes. We're talking about F1 again. Mercedes is is gonna win. I mean, 
it'll be cool to see Hamilton get his uh, his seventh, I guess. Um, his seventh, yeah, he'll match Schumacher, and to do it in a way that I'd say is a lot less controversial. You know, he's 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 a really clean and consistent driver. I know it's easy to hate on him, but the dude is insanely talented. You know what what I love about him is his consistency. The dude doesn't really make mistakes. It's very rare when he makes a mistake. It's notable, you know. So and, and it doesn't matter if he's pressured or whatever. You know, and, and it's not like like Valtteri Bottas is a slouch. Like that dude, that dude's a great driver. It's just Hamilton's better, you know, and that's why Bottas, whether he likes it or not, is gonna be the wingman. You know, like I don't think anyone here seriously thinks that that Bottas will win. Now, in an eight nine race season, and with Bottas like three maybe a really long beard, like eating like extra porridge every morning, maybe maybe he'll come and bring the fight. I feel like the difference between Hamilton and Bottas, though, is like Hamilton can be down, he can have a bad race, and he just comes back and like threat, like like it never happened. Bottas gets into these slumps, like, and he gets into these tears as well, right? But just I don't see the consistency there, and I'm I'm rooting for him. I would love to see Valtteri Bottas uh, win win a, a championship. Uh, I I loved seeing the drive of Bottas 2.0, but like, you know, uh, in my heart of hearts, do I see that happening? Nah. No, as much as I hate to say it, like it's just Lewis has that edge. That's what makes him special, you know. Uh, Fernie the Woe donated. Thank you very much. Hey, Misha, Batman is better than uh, Prestone Antifreeze any day. What's the Prestone Antifreeze? Maybe I'm being uh, obtuse, but I don't really know what that is. Um, the Corn Effect donated. Thank you very much. Me and my pregnant wife caught you before the show at House of Blues Chicago in 2017. Son is almost three and obsessed with your guys' minor sessions. Oh, that's awesome. Good parents. Show him some metal. That's so sick. Um, I appreciate it, man. And and Chicago House of Blues is always such a good time, man. We 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 played that venue so many times. It's like the biggest pain in the ass venue because like you park underground and you have to like walk up like or you have to wait for the elevator, which takes forever. So you just walk up like literally like six flights of stairs with whatever you're carrying to the room. Uh real pain in the ass. Good workout, I suppose, but oh, it's like that uh, part in Final Fantasy, you know? You know what I mean, Final Fantasy Seven. Um, Toronto is broken. Donated five. Thank you very much, buddy. Hey, Misha, just want to say Smash Grab has been a godsend to my production. I've, you, I even use it on my synthesized kicks and snares for DMB. That's fucking awesome, man. I think ever since we did the pro version, um, like that... That has opened up its its usability for because normally it's meant for like kind of more traditional drums and we send it to some of our electronic guys and they liked it but they didn't love it but I think with the the pro features you could really use it like especially with the saturation controls and the beef and air controls like um, I've been using it on a lot more stuff now because um, it, it you know ever since we developed it so I've been all all my drums now because that was the point but um, I've been using it in the electronic stuff and the orchestral stuff it, it's been working really well for that so I'm I'm really glad that you like it and you guys should try it out. It's free to try out. Try it out. Matt, post the link if you're still here. Um, Hayden Headlights donated. Thank you very much. Love these streams. Do It's Only Smile sometime soon. You know, these 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 are fun. I'm having fun with this. Actually, if we did another one, It's Only Smiles would probably be the next song. And that's an interesting one. I'm going to have to, like, maybe open and prep a couple projects for that because that one went through, like, a few iterations. Like... There's some riffs that like aren't there, and like the 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 chorus was different at first. Like it it that that one that one was a song that really had to change quite a bit over time for us to like sign off on it. And it went from like one of my least favorite songs to one of my favorites. So um, it was kind of a, an example of why taking time and taking a step back can be really useful. So you guys could see that, and I, I might be able to show you like what actually changed and what our approach was, like what the problems were and how we solved them. Um, uh, Slacker Poe, thanks for the donation. Hey man, longest ever fan. Uh, not longer than Jake, but you know, pretty long. Uh, just wanted to ask you for a shout out for my girlfriend. She loves you more than she loves me. You're goddamn right she does. Her name is Jacko, I think. That's how you say it? You still game for that P1 print you wanted to buy from me in the Santiago show? Let me know. No love for Formula E. Uh, yeah, how much you want to sell me that print for? Get in touch with me, man. Hit me up on uh, Instagram, Misha Periphery. Um, uh, Formula E is something I really, really want to like. I think I always forget to watch the races, and I'm going to tell you, I hate to admit this, but I 
can't really stand the sound of those cars. Like, I'm not being a purist. Like, I and I don't care that like everything's going electric. I think it's great. But those cars sound like dentist drills, and it actually like like when they're like on in car shots, it's like borderline painful to listen to. And it's a shame because the racing is so much closer. And uh, the other thing is that you know, I love I love seeing like iconic tracks that I know well and like I know every corner. And I you know you can tell how well a car is doing just by like how they're taking the line or whatever, right? And it's just relatable. And it's like I don't know any of these tracks and all these like weird short street circuits. And I get why, but it there's just a couple barriers for me. But I want to like it. I will eventually get into it. I bet I will. But it's just. It's not quite there for me yet. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but you know, um, brutal pizza. Thanks for the donation. What was done differently to the production on Juggernaut that gave that awesome bassy low end sound of the kick drums and guitars? So it's interesting that you notice that because that was the. I'd say we always have this like mission statement. Like Nolly and I will have like a conversation. Like, what do we want this to sound like? And Juggernaut was like, how far can we push low end? Like, I think like that's like borderline too much at times. Uh, but that was the goal, was just, tr like, how much low end, and how much can we get the guitars and bass to bind, you know? I don't know that we 100% achieved exactly what we set out to do, but that was the goal. That's what we were trying to do, so that's why that sounds the way that it does. Um, and, and funny enough, like, when it came out, I thought that was a difficult session, and when it came out, I was really not that happy with the way that album sounded. This happens a lot, though. I think you just get overloaded. And I remember listening to, to Juggernaut, like, a few years back and being like, Damn, like, I'm actually, I really like this mix, actually. Like, in fact, I wanted P4 to have a bit more of that low-end direction, and that's why it's a bit of a darker album, I think, like, sonically, because we were kind of chasing that a little bit. We didn't go quite as far in that direction, but, like, uh, I, I sort of appreciated the way that album sounded, like, years after it was released. At, at, at the time, I, I wasn't that stoked. I think because I had a bit of demo, I just, the song sound of, the, 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 the signature of, sound of the songs like the eq and all that and the, the way it was weighted was so different than the demos even the drums like that much higher pitched snares and whatever um it just sounded so different than what i expected and i think that was disappointing to me at the time and in hindsight sort of forgetting that and hearing it just for what it is i actually really appreciate it i i actually think that album sounds great um so yeah hopefully that answers that um how many how many donations until I show shitty twenty two fe uh, feces? Are we allowed to show that? I mean, I don't know, Jake, Matt, Jake, Jake. Can we? Are we allowed to show that? Well, I I don't have it ready to go. You know, um, uh, I, where 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 is it? Is it is it in the Dropbox? And. Do we want to throw people under the like? No one knows what's involved. Did we mention? I don't want to like throw people under the bus. You know, like I want it to be. Maybe Jake should show it on a live stream. I'm trying to I'm trying to be controversial in my own way, but I don't I don't want to throw anybody on under the bus. You know, like everyone was trying their best, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> fuck all them, fuck everyone. Jake's here. <laughs> oh, I love it. Jake leaked it already. I mean. Jake, you should just you should post you should play it on one of your streams cuz um or maybe I'll I'll show, I'll tell you what. Want to get a prep? I I just don't want to like pull it up and it like says who was involved or whatever. Um you know. Uh <laughs> We'll do it. All, okay. I will I will we we cab show poop. <laughs> Oh, you guys are too much. You guys are just like me. Um, so, okay. So, what is this? So, we did a we did a demo. There was one point in time where we considered working with a producer, and that was very much pushed on us by our manager at the time. Uh, you know, we'd all, we've always self produced, and I this was after Periphery Two, and it was like, okay, you know, we don't know everything. Maybe we should be taking our manager's advice. Maybe we should be like, you know, they're like. Like, uh, Sumerian was pushing for it. Like, everyone everyone on our sort of team at the time was pushing for it. And we're like, all right, well, you know, we've done Periphery 2. We've done Periphery 1. We've done... Uh, I don't know if we've done Clear or whatever. But we've done enough stuff where it was like, okay, maybe we'll let someone else uh, do it. And it was, the, the lesson that we learned is, like, I think that our vision is so specific that we know what we want. 
a producer is a super useful thing. I mean, I've produced bands, so obviously I can't shit talk producers. Producers can be great, but when a band, generally when a band doesn't already have a vision, because if a band has a vision, then that's where you have problems. The thing that we didn't entirely realize, uh, and this I don't mind saying, is that our manager at the time was really trying to push for us, and probably with a bit of pressure from Sumerian, to try to turn us into a radio rock band. Like, they wanted to sort of trick us or ease us into becoming a radio rock band because they saw potential for that. And we didn't realize that that was the real impetus for getting us to work with a producer. Like, we were just like, oh, maybe they can get some creativity out of us or whatever. And as a result, the the, the song we ended up with was not very, it was not to our liking. And I think we've, we've internally called it 22 Feces um, because it was 22 Faces. And... We had a demo version, and that got ripped apart and turned into 22 Feces, and then, funny enough, the album version is basically the original demo version. And we kind of showed it to all of our friends, and they were like, yeah, the demo sounds better in every way and is sonically better, even though, you know, uh, this was like a mixed song. And they were like, yeah, the, the mix doesn't even sound right, you know? So, I, okay, guys, because I love you, I promise I will show it on a live stream maybe the next live stream i just want to prep it and i i really do not want to throw people under the bus you know because it's it's not anyone it's not anyone's fault and and, and to, to to sort of cover my bases here like i mean it was probably our manager's fault but I, aside from that and that's why we have a new manager who rules but uh you know obviously like sumerian wanted us to be successful and they they thought like the radio rock route was the way to do it and they have no influence over our music so this is the best way to do it it's probably what i would have done to a band if that was my goal uh and you know the producer was just working with what he had and like it wasn't it wasn't a good fit uh and and that's it but the song is like not great so yeah uh jake i'm not gonna play it now what well, <sighs> i don't want to like pull it up on here and like it says stuff you know like It'll show up on the screen and everything. We can't have that. We gotta keep things kind of professional. But I promise on the next one, I will show you guys. Uh, anyways, let's get back to some questions and then we'll listen to more music and I'll break some synth stuff down because that's what we got coming up. It's like all the, all the pretty synth stuff. Um, and more stuff in the tracking session, actually. We still have quite a bit to go over as long as you guys are not bored. Play it on my phone. Okay, I can play it on my phone. No, but but if, if I play it for them, they could hear it. They could hear it. <laughs> I mean, okay, Jake, send it to me. Where is it? Send me a link. Send me a, a link, Jakey, Jakey. And I'm gonna, like literally just point it into this mic. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. It'll sound, it'll sound even worse going through this, uh, like this is the most ghetto way to listen to a song. <laughs> like I will say, he did, he did actually get good, uh, takes out of Spencer. So that that part became a pre-chorus. I haven't heard this in years. Oh, why did it stop? Oh, it's because it doesn't... That little section there is pretty cool though. That little filler.
so then this became the bridge, I guess. Man, I do not remember any of this. Oh, different solo! <laughs> Mark's like, what the fuck is this? This is 22 feces. <laughs> nice one, Jake. Oh, there's more. <laughs> All right, and that that's something I didn't want to do. So that's peer pressure from Jake Bowen. Uh, just just in case uh, I can get in trouble for that, this is uh, Jake Bowen's fault. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I forgot all of that. All of the pieces were there. There were. Parts that we wrote that sounded kind of new metal y, which, you know, I wasn't that crazy about, but, you know. Um, we were not stoked. <laughs> and all of our friends were not stoked. And they're like, just go back to the demo version. And the demo version is literally the, the version that ended up on the album. Like, not, I don't think there's a single change from that. So, uh, I, you know, it just, it just wasn't, a, it wasn't a good fit. And it was a lesson learned that maybe we should just stick to, like, producing ourselves, you know? You, you, you live and learn. Um, anyways, that was something I was not supposed to show you ever. So thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, what, do, what do we have? Um, we have so many more questions, which I want to answer. Um, v Vicente es Esnaola donated. Thank you very much. Big friend from Toronto. Also went to U of T. Hell yeah. I was new college. Where were you? Um... Any fun stories from the metal scene when you were a student in the city and did you ever play metal for your profs? Um, I, I wasn't like, no one liked metal and I wasn't going to metal shows. Like I was like with my group of friends. So they were, they were showing me kind of other stuff. Um, I did see Dream Theater in Toronto at Massey Hall. That was fucking insane. I saw him play Train of Thought. I was like, this sounds like the CD, but better. That blew my fucking mind, dude. And they, oh, and their encore was a change of seasons. It's like they played like a two and a half hour set and then they're like, okay, encore. And I'm like, no fucking way. That was, that was incredible. That was fucking incredible. And I was like kind of starstruck. Like I, I was like way in the back of the room and I was like, it's John Petrucci. Holy fuck. Like, oh my God. Like <laughs> I didn't get starstruck, but holy shit. I was like, that's really him. Holy. But yeah, that, that was, that was pretty incredible. I definitely remember that. Um, William X Earl donated. Thank you very much, man. Hey, Misha, how do you deal with a noisy room when tracking guitars? Do you ignore it, EQ it out, use specific gear? It's really interesting that you ask that because, dude, the the place that we were, like the, the apartment I lived in, like um, in Dallas where we uh, where we tracked this, I don't know why. It was such a nice place, but man, that room was so fucking noisy. Jake, Jake and, and Mark probably remember this. Like we had to like sit in really specific positions and it was still fucking noisy. There's actually like noise... I think in like Sentient Glow or some, there's some tracks where you can hear the fucking noise and it, it just like really pissed me off. I don't know what you can do about it. Apparently, I don't know because we didn't even, we just kind of layered or EQ'd around or cut around it. It was real bad. Um, oh yeah, someone's saying this was what, like 2004? Yeah, uh, that, that, I think it was, or, yeah, yeah, it probably was 2004 actually now I think. Um, show us how to make a basic song. Uh, I, I have things on the, the, the GGD YouTube channel where I'm like doing that. We have a new video coming out actually. Where I'm uh, writing a song to, uh, Feta from, uh, Destrage's Grooves because we have a groove pack and you can see that's a heavy thing. So that'll be fun. That was a cool, cool little clip. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Burst Amp donated. Hi, Misha. Any thoughts on releasing Convolution Reverb IRs of the drum rooms that you guys record GGD stuff in? 
It will help us sound like our other instruments are in the same room as the drums. Um... So you're saying, like, uh, capture the actual room for, like, the guitars and all that? We haven't really thought about that because that's not something that we use that much. It's something we could explore, just... I, I generally, I, I think we generally want to put out stuff that we actually would be using, you know? It's kind of like one of the advantages of having a software company. It's like, hey, what do we wish existed? <laughs> Let's make it, you know? So, um, I don't know that we would use it. It's something that we, I, I, I could bring to the guys and see what they, what, what they say. It doesn't hurt to bring it up. Um, Hail Staniel Adams. <laughs> nice. Donated. Periphery played Swamp Fest last year. Such a good, unique festival I think we all needed. Would 3 Dot ever consider putting on their own festival, given the means? Um, I would love to, man, but festivals are not only extremely expensive, but super risky. I don't know if you've seen, like, a lot of festivals have gotten canceled or, like... They've, like, destroyed some companies if they've... They're, they're such high risk, and I don't think they're high reward. I think they're, like, kind of cool. Maybe some are, but, like... The, the stars would have to align... And they would have to align financially for that to make sense. Would I love that? Absolutely. Oh, I think that would be so cool. And I've brought this up a few times. I do like, you know, quote unquote, a gent festival or whatever. Uh, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. But, uh, and, and and especially now, like, God, that, that's probably the, the hardest thing to plan would be a festival right now. Because no one knows anything, you know? One of the things that people aren't really talking about is like, how shows will get reintroduced like the first bands that go and play shows it's gonna be a risky affair because like who knows how many people are actually gonna show up like are you would, let's say let's say like let's just say hypothetically tomorrow like the government in general in, in america or wherever wherever you're at it was just like hey you have the all clear you know uh we think it's safe everything's open tomorrow and let's say like you know this week there was like a show let's say like even it, it was our show or some band that you really like that you're like you could never miss and you knew there was gonna be like a thousand people there like and it was gonna be cramped and sweaty and whatever like would you go to that like i put myself in that in that situation i'm like you know mashuga i'll never miss a mashuga show uh I, I don't know that I would go to a Meshuggah show right now. I think I would probably wait and just see what happened to the people that did go to this show in like a couple of weeks, you know? So that kind of apprehension is not good for business. Um, and restaurants are suffering. So many industries are suffering from that right now. So I, I don't know. Like, what, what would you do, you know, if you were in that situation? I couldn't do it. I'd go 100%. So it's split, you know? And I'd say even if like 20 or 30% of people couldn't go, that would fuck the mathematics of the whole setup like our margins are so fucking razor thin like even 10 to 20 percent less attendance would really fuck up a budget you know so um that's kind of the thing that's got to get figured out i don't know the answer at all i'm kind of asking you guys um you know right now probably no you know i probably go to a periphery show no matter what you know it's awesome to see the support and i I think because I would be more on the side of, like, I'd be cautious. That's why I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what people would do. Uh, but yeah, good question. Um, Jeff Santa Music donated again. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for doing this, Misha. Your unique insight on songwriting is really beneficial for songwriters. How do you structure your Axe Effects patches with the Octaver? One voice down 12 cents. Uh, 12, well, you would want 12, um, was it, semitones or whatever. What situations would it work in? Uh, so here, I'll just show you. Um, I mean, I don't have my guitar plugged in or, or nearby, but like, um, yeah, fetid demo rhythm. This is just a rhythm patch I was using. So yeah, uh, I have it in front of everything. I like it in front of the drive and in front of the amp. Um, I think it sounds way better there. Uh, and I like the Axe FX pitch, pitch shifter. Actually, like, uh, when I'm using software amps, it's one of the things I have. I, I might actually just capture the pitch shifter from the Axe FX on the way in because I don't really like any software pitch shifters as much as this one. This one tracks well and sounds good. And these are the settings I have it at. So just bring it down, shift to minus 12. Uh, so it's not sense, it's the, the tones there. You got the mix pretty high on there. That, that you can adjust it depending on your tone or whatever, you know. Um, you got the, the T808 OD boost here and uh, the 6160 block. I mean, you can just copy these settings. Uh, the cab looks activated. I've disabled all the cab stuff uh, globally so that it can't ever accidentally be on because I'm just using... Uh, the, the Zilla cab IRs. Um, so, you know, but when I did have stuff, I had the, the ML, ML stuff that, uh, that I worked with Miko with, but, um, I'm 
a very big fan of obviously of our uh, Zilla cab so that's what's sort of taken over now and I do that in the box so that I could change it after the fact just gives me an extra layer of, of uh, flexibility um Let's see. Uh, Pseudo Signal donated. Thank you so much, man. Yo, bro, you mixed our song Extelligence a while back. Oh, man, that's that's awesome. You like that mix? That You know, I don't think I'm good at mixing. I, I, I thought that mix came out really cool, and I, w I just went on instinct with that one, but I was really afraid that you guys would hate it. So thank you very much, man. Loving the streams. Did did I work with Phase 1 on uh, digital at all? Did, did he show you any cool electronic shit? Um... No, no, no. I don't. I, I'm. I'm ashamed to say I don't know what phase one is. Maybe, maybe I just have really bad memory. Um, is that the song that uh, that Spencer did vocals for? If so, I, I wasn't involved with that at all. Um, but I remember hearing it. It sounded really good. Like whoever, whoever did that did a really great job. Um, oh, Zach Munowitz. I know you. You don't need to donate. Come on. Uh, but thank you either way. Hey, Michelle, where do you see the state of the music entrepreneurial industry heading with the current crisis? Man, that's that's a tough one with probably a bleak answer. Like, I don't know. I don't know if shows are going to come back till next year. I know a lot of people are really hurting. And it's not just musicians. You know, it's crew guys who really count it. Like, these are guys. Our crew generally makes more money than we do on tour. And they deserve every fucking cent of it. Because they work so hard. They're so good at what they do. And Every our our crew, we always call them like a dream dream team. Like these guys will n normally never be without a gig because like I almost feel lucky to have them. Like that they would prioritize us over other bands or whatever because they're so goddamn talented. They're so good and they're the best dudes. And they're like family. And these are guys that under normal circumstances, if three bands fell through in a row, like they would still have gigs all year long. They will they will never be without work until something like this happens. And now they're. They're struggling. It really, it really sucks. So, you know, they're they're really they're really badly affected by it. And I don't like some of the stuff I'm seeing, you know, about that because it, it, it's their entire livelihood, and they're really good at it. And it just stopped to a, to, to you know, it went from like a hundred to zero just like that. And there's no really there's no open date. Like I have no idea when shows will happen. Like I was just saying, like even if they they do start up, I don't know that they'll be successful. I wish I had more comforting words, but you know, I, all I could do is knock on wood and hope that like this gets resolved sooner than later and that maybe this fall we'll have shows again. That would be, that would be amazing. You know, um, is there a backstory between you and Vailma and the song Punisher you helped on with that, that guy shitting on our van? Uh, we were, we were, I, I did eclipse, you know, I was writing that with, uh, with Mark and like, um, the guys were there and like, you know, it was mainly Mark and I, and like Sam was like, you know, helping because we programmed the drums and whatever. And like, um, I th like think Mark was like, yeah, you seen this thing? And it's like, yeah, yeah, I have. I thought it was kind of funny. Like was, the dude was like shitting on our band, but like his information was like all wrong. And like half the comments were just him, like people ripping on him. I was like, yo, it'd be hilarious if we put this sample in the song. It was like, he hums a riff. I was like, let's just make that the riff in the song, you know? And we did it just as a joke. And I was like, this is kind of sick and it's hilarious. So we did it. And Sumerian was totally down with it. We we're like, oh, I wonder if Sumerian's going to get pissed, but they, they loved it. So yeah, we just did that. And then seeing that live was hilarious. I don't know. And I think that dude even like came on stage with Vail Maya and like did that part with him. It was kind of funny. So yeah, um, this is coming up on YouTube. Yeah. If you need to go to bed, go to bed. You can watch the rest from here. Um, but uh, let's, uh, I've got one more question and then we're going to look at more music. Sorry. I'm trying to juggle all this stuff for you guys. Uh, water break. Keep hydrated at all times, gentlemen from Noah, Noah Garta. Thanks for the donation, dude. And yes, mm. talking so much, I'm getting cotton mouth. All right, let's look. Ah, so this is interesting. So originally, after this riff, it actually went to this. It went straight to that, and that was the end of the song. Um, and it was like kind of this cool groove, but it was like kind of it was a, this like one shot. It's like the only time that you heard it. It wasn't really thematic at all. It was just kind of like, why is this there? And we we did we did all this in one day. 
um and like we kind of sat on it and i was just like ah, i feel like I feel like this song has a little bit more to say like i feel like we've taken it to this place where it's like it's just still feels incomplete so let's just let's just fuck with it and see what happens so i was like i like that groove let's make that something more thematic right so we took the groove out of here uh sorry out of here and rather than like kind of giving it this final approach where it's just like staccato by itself, right? Um, you know, it's just kind of like Meshuggah-ish, like uh, polymeter kind of groove, you know, the, the typical stuff that we always do. Um, but but I thought I thought I thought it had a cool vibe. Like I thought like mm, that's gonna be that's gonna be a good live groove, you know? We've got the loop going there, that that, that quiet loop. Um, and then we just added these layers to it. And that is actually referencing... Uh, this. That piano line. So that's... That's what sort of informs the melody on, uh, whoops. And the piano is also going there too. So now this part is, rather than being the end of the song, is like kind of this driving section and goes into something. And it's like, all right, let's get, one of my favorite things to do is like you take a motif and now puts, you know, because this is a static uh, uh, chord progression. It's just the open, was that C? Um, I think this is tuned to C. Whatever, whatever it's tuned to, it's, the, it's that low note. Um, so here, we're keeping that motif going in both counts, and we have movement, but we're keeping the rhythm. And it's no longer staccato. We've got strings filling it out. I always love the, these gaps. One thing that I really wanted to do with this with this groove, because we've been doing this since the carnival groove in this song, is not starting on the downbeat. And usually when you don't start on the downbeat, you'll start before. I was like, I want this one to start after. So the first beat's actually empty. So like, and you get these like cool little gaps at the end of the phrases, which I was like filling in with splashes and Matt went to town on that on the album, which I love like these little like fills like leading into these little gaps with splashes, you know Get that little uh, get that little bell just hanging there like I love that kind of stuff We got this post-rocky lead, like, reinforcing the melody there. Alright, we'll look at this section. I did see someone saying, did you contribute some lyrics or themes or is it just Spencer? So when it comes to lyrics, Spencer does that. I, I can't write lyrics to save my life. I'm pretty useless. I do like working on vocal lines and Spencer and I, since like Periphery 3 especially, we did this on Periphery 1, but I think Periphery 2 and Juggernaut, he kind of wanted to have his own voice and you know, like, like... We didn't really, we didn't really work on the vocals as much then, you know, uh, and he wasn't as receptive to it. But as of P3 and especially P4, like we wrote a lot together. What we'd do is we'd go to his studio and we would sing into like a mic like this, just sing gibberish, you know, um, and just sing the vocal lines and whisper scream the rhythms, you know, with, again with gibberish. And then he would just turn that into lyrics and, and like do it properly. And that worked really well we couldn't i'd go over there for like two hours and we'd knock out like three songs like in entirety like it was such a good vibe and it was just getting these these ideas like back and forth like it, it was such a cool experience um and because of that i don't know exactly who wrote what because it might have been my idea and then he like turned into something that became you know we just 
kept tweaking, but that's the best ideas is like when you can't really even tell whose it is because it's just been bounced back and forth so many times and you're just like vibing you're like yeah yeah that's it there we go we're, we're 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 zeroing in on this really sweet vocal line so i'm really really proud of the vocal lines on um on periphery four because i feel like it, it all sort of gels really well um good question um so this section is from back here. It's this motif. And we we're kind of running it with it like, all right, let's like do like a build up version of that and it'll probably go into a heavy version of it. You know? So that's exactly what happens here. And we've got like uh, the sub 37 and mini log. Really stoked with those sounds. And we have like these electronic drums. I don't even know if you hear this arpeggio in the in the real thing, but like. So that's in there. And actually, because of the vocal lines, this is why I have the tracking version. That has strings in it and all this, which wasn't in this version, but it's like when we were tracking it, we're like, oh, we can make this even better because we have vocals to work with, you know? And again, rather than just going straight into the heavy part, it was like, let's build this down, you know? like. And just kind of hang on this note. And someone was acting, asking about the, the impact. It's like this impact 37 from uh, the dubstep one uh, vengeance library. This is like all the tracks in the world here. There's just so much stuff here. So we got our octave layers, which means these are probably octave layers too. Or no. Got really pretty chords. Super in tune because we're probably tracking with the Evertune on that. So as not to have to deal with it. More octaves there. So you gotta really like turn these down because there's so much going on. And then we've got this. That's taking up space. Ooh. So here's a sub 37 running into distortion and like delay into an axe effects. It's kind of cool. It almost sounds like a guitar. And it's maintaining that, that theme. It's actually very present. So yeah, this is our epic release, you know? This is the, 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 the sort of release that the song needs. And then to close it out, now that staccato section makes a lot of sense, you know? And we get that pause. That pause it makes me so happy, you know? I started doing a lot more of these lately. I just love it. Like, Meshuggah does these all the time. This is a total Meshuggah ripoff riff, so why not rip them all the way? They always do these riffs where they'll, like, they'll fill out all the, the, the 16th notes and, and whatever with, uh, with toms, you know? 
Uh, and it's actually pretty challenging to play this. Like Matt said, like he had to really practice these parts for when he was tracking it because, you know, he's maintaining the pattern with the kick. He's doing um, uh, pedal hat the whole time. Uh, you know, this is one of those ones that was pretty specific. He's probably not matching these tom hits exactly, but they're just supposed to be filling in the gaps and like kind of going up and down the toms. And we kind of knew that's where it was going to end. We didn't have the ending or the, the suck my balls in this one. Uh, anyways, I'm going to look at some more stuff, and then I'm going to show you the tracking project real quick. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for chilling, Misha. I got to go to work. That's all good. You guys are real sweethearts for uh, for watching this. this. I mean, we're going for a while here. Or, have we been doing this for two hours? Jeez. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for uh, putting up with me and listening to me rant about a whole bunch of stuff. Show you weird demos over my microphone <laughs> um all right uh architect donated thank you very much would you guys ever do a remix record there's currently a lot of crossover and heavy bass music and genty stuff especially you know um if we've had people do remixes of our stuff it's generally like they take the vocal lines and and work with it i mean yeah it's it's something that we wouldn't be involved with it as much uh but i'd, I'd be definitely down for that it, we'd have to just Get that process started. I don't know people in that world so much. I'd probably ask Mr. Bill to do one because that dude's fucking ridiculous. Never seen dude write music so fast. He made me feel like worthless when I was when I was watching him work. I was just like, I have nothing to, to add. You're just insane. Amazing. Amazing. Genius. Um, oh, K uh, Kian. He said it's like Keanu without the ooh, right? Oh, no, he said it was like Keanu Reeves without the Ooh Reeves. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, Keon, I don't know how to say the rest of it. Houseman Live, I guess. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name, which I did. Uh, donated. Thank you very much. Hey, dude, all these layers and leads are super inspiring. Do you have a method of dialing and post securing these ambient tones to match with the rest of the mix, or is it creating the sound first and making it fit? How's the post EQ looking? I mean, like, I'm not really EQing, it's more leveling. These are all going to the same bus, and I showed you that guitar bus. The, the guitar bus is deceivingly uh, simple. Um, it's just got this EQ and a multiband, which frankly doesn't look like it's doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> but that's the raw tone, and um, you you obviously want to start with as good a source tone as you can. That's uh, that's rule number one. It's you know you can't polish a turd, right? So you want your source tone to be good, and then it's just sort of leveling it, making sure everything is just, you know, like these these all had to be I clip gained. It's very easy to clip gain in uh, in uh, Cubase. So I just clip gained these the fuck down because like normally these would be all the way up. Like this, that's down five dB, down three, down one. You know I'm sort of prioritizing another five. Just prioritizing what I want to cut through. And we had this uh, rule with like with Nolly and Nolly kind of because I used to go fucking nuts with layers, and it would be too much. And he's like, if you could delete it and you can't even hear it, then just delete it. <laughs> you know, it's probably doing more harm than good. So uh, we kind of have that rule. And this is this is the writing project. So I always go a little more than I should with that stuff, knowing that hey, if I have to delete it, if I delete it and I don't even hear it, then I don't even miss it, right? So uh, yeah, that's that's how I approach that. Um, Jeff, uh, Neiman, uh, donated. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. That's a very generous donation. Misha, I, I first found Periphery when you did your Icarus Live demos for your Angle Invader amp in 2008. Wow. That was a long time ago. 12 years. And I just wanted to say thank you for the wonderful music that you all have created. I love meeting you all at the Hollywood House of Blues. RIP. Oh, that's right. They, they tore that out. Man, it was... I, I don't know when we met, but it, I'm sure it was nice to meet you too, man. We always we always like meeting our fans. Um, you guys are fucking awesome, which is why we like meeting you. Um, that's right, that venue is gone. It's pretty nuts. We played we we used to like play there a lot. Um, it's weird to see a house of blues disappear. It was a real pain in the ass to park there. Like we'd have to pay like an insane amount for our bus to park. You know how it is in in Hollywood. So it's like. They, it was not necessarily the most convenient place to play at all, but uh, we always had great fucking shows there. So, you know, a lot of venues are disappearing, and I 
fucking hate to say this, but man, this whole situation is making a lot of venues. Uh, like I heard, like the the Troubadour might go out of business. Like all these like legendary venues might not be able to survive. They might not be able to weather the storm. So it's a real shame. Knock on wood, that doesn't happen. You know, um, man, I see we have a lot of people who have subscribed. Thank you so much, by the way. Multi passes or multi pass AKG Tucan. Surfsy, Kai Untitled, Amen, Amen Talks, Inner Product Geek Dad. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know how any of this stuff works, but I really appreciate you taking an interest in this. Like the more you take an interest in it, the more I will do this and sort of share everything that I can and know. Um, so yeah, let's take a look before we end this. Let's take a look at this project. So this is actually, this is interesting, because I didn't show you this last time, because there wasn't really that that much different to show, and I felt like it was just, you were just hearing, like, the, um, you were just hearing the, uh, the, the album version, effectively. This one has some differences, so I can actually show you some stuff. I don't know why Wirecast is showing there, but there, you can see the, the software that I'm using to stream. So we'll just let this thing open up. Hope it doesn't crash. I'm, someone was asking what I was using. I'm using Cubase 10. I own 10.5. You can see it's a 10.5 project. And the reason I'm not using that is because, like, as I was opening it up and I had both projects, it crashed. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, please don't crash on the screen, on the stream. So, fingers crossed we don't crash and this, uh, this starts up. Okay, so 10's a touch more stable. So, this has... Uh, one of my favorite sounds that I think I've ever created, which is this. And this is from, uh, where is this fucker? Down here. I have, I have an EP2 Echoplex, which is a tape delay. Now, let me, like, dig it out. So yeah, this thing. Let me let me pull up a screen so that you can actually see this. This thing is older than I am. This is a this is an old school tape delay. I this I have to plug uh, Atomic Music in Maryland. Um, it's a it's a used store. Like they just resell stuff. I've been going there since I was like fourteen, and like oh man, so many times this has happened where I'm like almost walking up and like oh, today was a bust, you know? Because sometimes there's a ton of stuff, sometimes there's nothing. I was like oh what's that box? It's an EP2 Echoplex. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've never, I've never really like played with like a, a, a tape delay. So I plugged it in, and like 30 minutes passed, and I was like, oh my god, like I've just been playing this for 30 minutes. It's got such a vibe, and I love delays. It's like one of my favorite effects. I have like probably like 20 delay pedals. I've got a bunch of emulate tape delay, and I was like, you know, but can't be that good, you know. But it's like, oh my god, the real thing is just so much fun. Uh, it sounds great. I had this one serviced uh, by by Atomic Music, so I mean, it looks it looks a little rough, but it actually like runs really well. And it, this is my favorite creative tool. Like, you just get lost in this thing, right? So, um, I was like, we should definitely use this as much as possible, and it can sort of self oscillate pretty easily. So I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that this is just like a reverse version of that self oscillation if i'm not mistaken i think i just like reversed this thing it's like after a really long tail yep yeah. Why is this so soft? Oh, it's so our work shouldn't be on. I don't want that. So it's just literally it fading. Or wait, no. I don't know. That might be that might be a rendered file. Anyways, I'm trying to sort of dig up where that came up, but that is that is what what's running through that it was just this really sick ambience you know i think i got some echo boy just to make it stereo because it is a mono effect and this is running through that stuff too
And that's what I was talking about, this chord. That's different. That's the way that you guys know it. Anyways, you can hear these little artifacts. I just think it's a beautiful sounding effect. You hear that little warbling? Like that's just literally the tape wearing, you know? Um, and and it's, it's, it's so interesting because this was how they made delay, you know, back in the day. So then they invented like cleaner delays and digital delays. And those are like this revelation. It's like, oh, you could get the repeats and they're perfect. We couldn't do that before. But like now, like we want this like vintage vibe. It's like, man, that, that tape war was so cool because of all these albums that we heard that had that vibe, you know? So it's funny. It just kind of, it's cyclical like that. But I absolutely love that thing. So we kind of tracked everything through that. And this is, uh, this is something I did as well. Um, I rendered out all the, the MIDI for this so that, um, you know, the project would run very efficiently for tracking, you know? This has... It's either demo, you know, Spencer records on his rig and he demos on his rig, so this might be somewhat final, but it, or he might have redone some takes, but it's pretty close to final. I just... Like I kind of plugged it in just to hear how everything was interacting and if we wanted to write stuff. So this is actually what I wanted to show you. So everything's rendered out except, actually no, this is rendered out too. I probably did that just after I wrote it, but. Um, So it's like callbacks. It's like I added these uh, these violins, and I think this is. Let's see what this is for sure. But uh, yep, Spitfire Chamber Strings. I love it. love this library. It's like really intimate and sounds very beautiful, and I think it sounds pretty realistic. So this is what it sounds like soloed. I think it adds something like I don't think we used a real section for that there I don't I think that one is just like but you know the goal is just for it to sound good so if it sounds good in context then that's good enough you know one of the highest notes ever Let's see what else is different about this one. Oh, this is actually mocked up. This actually didn't used to have vocals on it, but I was like, you know, it's the same theme. We should just take the vocals. And it worked really well, and I kind of chopped them up. Down in the blue. He obviously retracted it for the final thing, but, Down in the blue. but I wanted there to be a, like a little gap. He didn't do st uh, he didn't do it staccato on the final thing, but the accents were were taken from that. Down in the He went up on that note on the final one. I also changed this, uh... Like with like some, just using like very audio, I think. Or I might have just manually pitch shifted it, but I changed the notes on it. Can I tell you guys something funny? <laughs> I think it was Jake who started this. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's either Jake or Mark. And now every time, every time I hear this, I'm gonna ruin this guy for you because every time I hear this part, I just hear the same part. It's so fucking stupid. We're all ten feet tall. We're all ten feet tall. I just hear, I got a ten foot dick. I got a ten foot dick. <laughs> Sorry, that's absolutely retarded, but it makes me smile. Thanks, Jakey. Or Mark, whichever one you guys did that. Um. I think I was messing with Very Audio on this. That's their like uh, tuning thing in, that's built into. Didn't sound very good, but it, we just needed the notes out of it. And then, like, he just tracked that stuff, so it sounded better. It's good, it's good for mocking stuff up if you want to work with it. Sounds weird and robotic. Kind of works with the vibe, though, you know? Oh, and I added strings to this section, too. And this one I didn't export out, so... Yeah. Again, uh, Spitfire Chamber strings. Perfect for this kind of vibe. You can create, like, really cool textures, you know, because these are not distorted, so you can create these cool chords. They're all sort of separated out. I have it separated in the, the violins. One, two, uh, violas, and just a cello there. It just mixes so wonderfully. It's just kind of playing off the vibe in the background. So that da, na, na, is because that's the backing line there. So it's just playing off motifs, right? <laughs> so it matches up there. It's like these two lines kind of dancing around each other, but then meeting up for that for that one moment. I don't know, just fun stuff like that. This is the stuff we call this spice racking, where like you know you have your song done, and then you can just add these little, just just throw some spice on it at the end. You know, it's good fun. Um, all right, uh, let's see what people. Are saying. Uh, Kello, I think is how you say donate. Thank you very much. Periphery brought me here. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Short and sweet. Shred Shot, again, donated. Thank you very much, dude. So after living in LA for a while as a car guy, can you see yourself leaving since it's car and music mecca? So actually, I live in uh, in Austin, Texas. Just just FYI. But I do visit LA quite a bit. Um, if I ever did move there, it would be because of uh, the, uh, the, the, the roads. Um, and I have a lot of friends there. But I do love Texas. I do love Texas. Texas is great. Um, can I compare the BE100 Deluxe to the Omega and the Dover? I can't seem to get the 100 Deluxe saturated. So actually, that's one thing about those amps. These these are more Brit style amps. Do do not saturate it. It's actually the problem that I had with the um, with the XFX3 when we were tracking this album. I tracked everything with the um, with the Friedman. It's got this attack. It's great, you know. Um, but like songs like. Um, uh, follow your ghost where it's like these dirty sort of low power chords and you want that saturation that low mid saturation is just nothing and there's no way to introduce it really it's just the way the amp it, it allows a lot of top end to hit the front end so it's like doing almost like that boosted thing but there's just no low end saturation 5150 on the other hand that that's what it does and then you can tighten it up with a boost so that's why i ended up switching to that for that um it's also one of the reasons why I use that amp as like a basis for the Invective because I really love that sound. It just, it just makes it sound huge and ampy. So um, 
there, there, uh, there just isn't... In fact, the Omega seems to be this kind of common ground between the two. It's almost like a hot-rotted Mesa or Soldano, but, like, it it's thicker sounding than, uh, than like, the, the, the hot-rotted British amp vibe. But it's not as bright, and you can get more saturation out of it. I will do a live stream where I like compare that. I don't have a BE-100, so I can't compare it with that. But the Dover, in my mind, is a better BE-100 than a BE-100. I mean, it doesn't have a clean, but as far as like the Brit sound, the hot rod Brit sound, there is not a better sounding amp that I've come across. So um, I've got them all set up right here. Like I, I was thinking about doing it today. I just ran out of time because I was setting up for this. I'll do it another day. I, I'll, I'll do one actually probably with my GoPro strapped to my head so you can hear it in the room. And I'll do another one where I like plug into a load box if you guys want. You know, let me know if that would be interesting. Um, like, uh, let's see, let's see. Ooh, Lil Ass Blaster. Good name, good name. Like it donated. Thank you very much. Hey, Misha, any chance you could let us know what riser build-up sounds you're using? Also share mini log presets. Anyways, just want to say hello and support. Also, fun fact, we met at Guitar Center Rockville, uh, in Rockville, Maryland. That's awesome. Yeah, I used to go there all the fucking time. Um, I don't, I don't have my mini log presets saved. Like, I just make them, and I usually make them for the song. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty simple patch. It's like a, that just sounds like a saw wave. And, and what I'm doing there is, a, is you know, it's like that common, like, synth wave trick where you, where you take the LFO and you, you basically have it modulate the pitch. So it's like always going in and out of tune. Gives it that, like, old school synth wavy sound. I love it. And then you'll be surprised how much this reverb and delay can like do for for that. This this is probably captured like that because it was on the Axe FX. Like I ran this through the Axe FX. Great tool for synths, by the way. You know, uh, did a lot of that running this stuff through Axe FX for like a little bit of grit or like just the effect. The effects quality on the Axe FX is wonderful. Do you guys hear this on the final uh, like on the song? Did you know that part was there, or or is that like just sort of hidden? I'm really curious. Okay. Because I, I, I thought it was so buried, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, it was even worth putting that in there. I always like that that place. I, I even swung it to match the drums. Um, all right, sweet, sweet. Um, Friend Law donated. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Misha, thanks to you and the guys for consistently making sweet music. Oh, that's very kind of you. We just make music for fun. I like making fun. I like doing hood rat shit with my friends, you know? Um, New Era Panda donated. Thank you very much. Thank you for such amazing music, which I had that guitar tone. I mean, dude, the thing that's interesting is that there's... I, I think people expect my guitar tone to be all crazy. Like, um, literally, I mean, again, this is this is bypassed. So use Zilla, Zilla cabs. I have my preset that I use. I've been using the the Swedish technique with a... With, I add a K100 in there. Um, these are the amp settings. 6160 block, um, you know, kind of that 646 vibe there. Um, here, there we go. With input boost, bright switch, that should give you everything you need. Just copy that. Just using the boost that's on here. You can use your precision drive if you want even more control. That's probably a better way to go if you have one. That's it. It's really, really simple. And you, I, I showed in this video, if you didn't see already, what's on my guitar bus, on what's on my two bus, you can literally recreate this for yourself. The rest is in your hands, unfortunately, so I can't, I can't help that so much. But it just means that you'll sound more like yourself and less like me, and that's great. You can develop your own sound. So there you go. Um, other than that, I mean, that pretty much covers it, except for probably the single most important part of the song, which is... Uh, does anyone know who says this? Suck my balls. In fact, I think we just. My balls. Yeah, people know it's Jakey. Suck my balls. Suck my balls. Suck my balls. Greg's, we definitely, Greg, we should, <laughs> we should definitely make that like a sound for like I don't know a subscriber or something, <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be a good call? Yeah, Jakey, suck my balls. That's right. My balls. Suck my balls. That is a uh, tribute to Uncle Fucker by South Park. So, you know, 
this is a uh, we thought like like this is like such a serious sounding album and such a serious sounding song and th this is why they should never give us computers and the power to do things or a record or like letting us own our own record label or having full control over everything cause that's what happens you know we name our album hail stand which our current manager i love our current manager uh, he's like honestly i can't say enough about it. wayne like he, he's the, the best dude ever He's, he, but he'll definitely speak his mind, you know, he, and that's what I love about him. Like, he'll, he'll definitely tell you exactly how he feels. And when we told him we were going to call the album Periphery 4 Hail Stan, and it's going to have, like, you know, a big Baphomet on the front, he was like, guys, like, I just think this is, like, the dumbest idea. Like, you know, I, it's your album. You can do what you want, but I, I feel like I at least have to say my piece. Like, I think it's the worst idea ever. Like, if there's any way I can convince you to change your mind, we were just like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> we just went for it. He's, he's such a good dude. And to be fair, in the end, he saw, like, the fans' reaction. He's like, all right, you know, I, I hate the album name more than anything, but I get it. It works, you know? So even he, like... Will will concede like he, that that it made sense, but he still hates he hates the album name so much. Uh, I'm sure he probably wasn't a, ma a massive fan of this, but that's a good relationship. Like he respects us, we respect him. Um, fucking love that dude. Love that dude. We could not do Periphery without that guy. This basically at that point, you know, best dude. Um, anyways, um, uh, can I talk about your time working on the Animals as Leaders self-titled album? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's so it's so funny. I mean, I think it was because like I wasn't really properly credited for that, which I got pretty mad at Tosin for a while, but I'm, I'm over it now. Like, obviously, it's one of my best friends. And I know he didn't mean to do it on purpose, but yeah, but a lot of people don't even know that I was involved with that. But like, I did a lot. Like, I fucking produced it, wrote wrote for it, played guitar solos, played guitar, programmed all the drums, pro uh, wrote all the bass, which was just like clean guitar down to an octave. And it was the first production gig. It's got a really cool story, actually. Um... Like, uh, Tosin, this, this is, this is, it's, it's, where do I start? It's kind of, it's kind of interesting because he was in this band called Reflux. They were like this really hot band in the DC area of which Ash from Sumerian Records was the singer and like kind of managed the band and Evan Brewer was the bassist and Tosin was the guitarist. I remember like in the scene, it was like, oh man, there's like this black guitarist with a seven string, and he does stuff on guitar that I've never seen. He was like sweeping and tapping and looping. And these were things like, back in like 2002, like nobody was doing it. And if they were doing sweeps, it was like really basic stuff, but they weren't like doing these crazy hybrid sweeps as a riff, you know, it was just like, and they were incredible live. And and and, uh, and then they, you know, Tosin wanted to go to school. We became friends and like Tosin wanted to go to school. So the band kind of had to, go on hiatus or break up because you couldn't have that band without toast and uh ash started sumerian records as a result you know and evan brewer went and became this insane bassist playing for all these other bands and um like uh when when he was back i guess like prosthetic records was kind of sneaky and they're like well you you know they reflux owed us two albums so they went to toast and they're like hey how would you like to do a solo album take them take you know like uh, however much money for an advance so he took it but he spent it all <laughs> and then didn't really have an album and he was doing these demos but he wasn't happy with them like they weren't sounding good and like honestly it was like some of these ideas of songs but they were like twice as long and they didn't go anywhere and he was like really not happy and they were like yo where's our album and he was like god i don't want to turn this in i'd like rather quit guitar he's like yeah maybe i'll just move to like sweden and like teach philosophy or something i was like what the hell are you talking about dude like you obviously you need to play guitar like that's what you exist for is you need to be putting out this music like he he was at that time and still is like one of the, the most insane creative forces on guitar and just in music in general like i was like you have to be doing music that's insane and i was working at a container store at the time i was like look like see if you can just get enough money so that like i don't have to work for a month and we'll just lock ourselves in my apartment and just fucking make a brand new album and i'll do my best to make it sound good but like i'd never done a production gig or anything i was just trying to help my friend out who was like trying to quit music so i was like okay you know let's let's just try to salvage this you know but we ended up having such great writing chemistry like we put together this album and we're like when we're done with it we're you have to realize we were just trying to fulfill a contract so it wasn't even trying to be good but we were just writing stuff and we're like yo i think this is really good <laughs> we were showing it to people and they're like yo what what the fuck is this it's like oh it's his new project and matt wasn't drumming for us at that point in time but i'd seen him drum and i was really kind of blown away with this feel and like how just naturally he was playing so i'd like kind of programmed everything with him in mind and i was like well i know this drummer like 
He's, he plays with a bunch of local bands. He could probably drum for you. Like, I kind of programmed all these parts with him in mind. So Matt was actually their first drummer and played their f first few shows because I introduced them. Uh, due to history and a whole bunch of other things happening, you know, he ended up drumming for us, which is really, really good. And they ended up with Matt Garska, who's like one of the best drummers on the fucking planet. So it all worked out just fine, you know? But um, yeah, like that's that's how that album happened. That's how I accidentally became a producer because I never wanted to be a producer. I never thought it was good enough. You know, uh, that, that, that album is really rough around the edges. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just trying to help my friend out. But through that, a bunch of bands hit me up and they're like, hey, can you do our album? And I was like, wait, so this means like I could take another month off of work if I get this much. So it's like, yeah, I'd rather rather be producing this album instead of working at the container store. Sure. You know, and that's that's what sort of jump started this this producer career, which I never really intended to do, you know, Um so yeah, that's the story behind that album. Uh, any chance Omnom makes a return? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't for this whole COVID thing, like Elliot would probably be here and we'd be working on it. We 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 have a track list pretty much together. The album is gonna be really cool. We just need to actually be able to get together to do it. You know. Um, but yeah, uh, Haunted Shores uh, coming back to Bandcamp. No, we're gonna be doing Spotify. You know, it's a three dot band, and we're gonna be doing it through through the sort of proper channels, if you want. Band Bandcamp's a good way if you're not signed or whatever. But now that we're signed, it's probably better to just go through you know the the distribution network that we have access to, if that makes sense. Uh, the, all this knowledge you develop all by yourself. I mean, no, I got. I don't really read the manual so much or, or watch tutorials, but I have a lot of really smart friends and like being friends with Nolly and a lot of guys who just teach me like a lot of really cool tricks. I just pick up whatever I can know and then kind of adopt it to what I want to hear, if that makes sense. Um, anyways, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, like, just tuning in. Where are we doing this evening? We're, 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 we're closing this one down. Sorry. We've been doing this for like two and a half hours, but this will be on YouTube so you can watch it. Um, yeah, you can, you can see the whole thing after the stream ends. Tosin sounds like quite a card. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Hello. <laughs> Uh, will post COVID be the first time all periphery members get to play live together? Yeah, it's one of the things, you know, people have been like, hey, why don't you do like a, like a live stream thing? We all live in different places. Um, you know, it, it, it would be, I, I don't think like any of us can even fly or want to fly. So we'd all have to fly, get our gear together. It, it just wouldn't be possible. There are bands who like live close or whatever. You could set up in different rooms and whatever and make it happen. If we could do it for cheap or free or whatever, like that would be one thing, but it would just be so expensive and I don't even think it would really be possible because no one really wants to travel right now, understandably. Um, so we all do live kind of far and probably, yeah, post-COVID, post this craziness will be the first time we actually get to hang out. It'd be nice because I miss the guys. When we tour, it's like one of my favorite things is I just get to hang out with them. They're like my best friends and I really miss them. Uh, so tour is like, that's like one of the biggest and best things is like I, I get to spend time with my best friends and it's always a great time. Um... Oh, tell Jake to do more UFC streams. Yes, Jake needs to do more UFC streams. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to see? Because I'm about to wrap up on this. Like, I think I covered everything pretty pretty in depth, right? We have, we have a pretty good sense of what happened for this song. And maybe I'll prep uh, It's Only Smiles for the next one. You guys have been very patient putting up with me for like two and a half hours. I, I really appreciate it. All the subs and all the donations. It's incredibly kind of you. you know, I, I'm... I'm actually having just a lot of fun just talking to you guys and just re-exploring all this stuff because it was long long ago enough that like I'm like oh wow I, I forgot about this or that you know even just prepping these projects for the for you guys is a lot of fun so yeah uh, I really appreciate all the support um, uh, dude last few thoughts about Architects I mean they're an incredible band they're awesome I, I I don't know them super well uh Nolly's worked with them and says they're they're like really lovely guys Spencer's high note solo the vocal high note sure why not um And you can hear like the, the the screams and the cleans are all. He just get, sent me a bounce. Obviously, for the final thing, like we had the the stems and everything. Mistakes, 
<laughs> Pretty epic. He put more reverb on that part. I didn't even realize that. There's this really cool saturation going on in his voice. It's like creating this this harmonic. We're going under. It's not worth shaking the fire. It's like like a belted octave like in the background. I didn't even know that. Um it's it's in tune. It's in tune. I mean like he uses he uses a little bit of tuning, but like with his voice actually, like tuning does not pick it up very well because it's very gritty in the high end, so it just it it goes fucking crazy. So you have to be on or else like like it, it just won't do anything. It can't even pick it up. Um So yeah, is there uh did we did we cover just about everything? Everyone happy? Ever everyone's happy? Cool. Uh, does putting, let's say, an 11 to a 98 gauge, 7 straight to LA, tune straight down an octave. I mean, I, I've never tried to tune that far, but 25.5, dude, you, you really want a longer scale. It's not going to sound good. The note's going to, like, jump. It'll take forever to settle. Like, you really want a longer scale. That's half, half the battle for that. I'd say at least, like, a 27-inch scale if you're going to go an octave below, you know, at least. If you can find anything bigger, go with that. Um... Uh, I'll pay you a hundred bucks to play all of Unleash the Ponies right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm going to have to not make a hundred dollars because I won't be able to do that. That's a hard song to play and I have not, I have not practiced it, but it will be on the solo album. That's right. That's right. Here, I'll show you, I'll show you guys something. I'll show you guys something. Oh. Yeah, I want it. I don't even know if you can hear this. Nope. Can't even hear it. Whatever. I'll show you guys next time. Sorry. Sorry, pal. Uh, I'll set that up for another time. But yeah, um, I don't know when the solo album comes out. I was like loosely talking with... Uh, we, we have some cool stuff. I'm going to be putting out the whole back catalog on... Uh, th like separated into like 10 volumes. So we're going to be doing it like a couple weeks at a time going backwards. And I've compiled all my like orchestral stuff and like old electronic stuff, and then I'm gonna put out a solo album. So there's gonna be all that stuff. So you'll be able, you won't have to like find weird links or go to SoundClick or all that stuff. You'll be able to get on Spotify and YouTube and all that fun stuff. So, oh, you did hear that? So I just didn't hear it. It's wild, fucking wild. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I forget what we were talking about, but. Uh, Oh, did I show that song that didn't make Hail Stan? Why can't I hear it? Maybe maybe it's not going through the headphones. Oh, I know why it's not going through the headphones. Go through the monitor. Let's see. Let's see if it goes through the monitor. <laughs> Yeah, the solo album is going to be kind of weird. I posted this on uh, Instagram. Sounds like Yaga Yazis. It's so funny because the... Uh, the patch I made, it's like all these contact instruments, like called Yaga. Like it's like a bunch. Of, it's totally inspired by that. But this is like just super video game sounding. That's all you get to hear. I might put this one up on there too. This fucking idea.
just gotta tweak a few things. The solo album is not just gonna be heavy stuff. But Unleash the Ponies will be on it as well. I do need to fix the snare on that. There's something that's not quite right. Anyways, lots of work to do. But I have a pretty good idea of what the solo album is gonna look like. Anyways, um, oh and Breeze. Breeze will definitely be on there. I just need to get the mix the way I want it. But yes, Breeze will 100% be on there. The solo will probably be the same. The ending was like improvised and kind of like whatever. I might try to improve the ending of it. But the beginning will be the same. The, the whole uh, Unleash the solo album. Yep. Song from Horizon Nam video. I don't remember what that is. Um, Breeze is there. No, Legata won't. That's, that's too old. That's too old. Uh, what else would be... Oh, these are all Animals as Leaders demos. Nope, can't show you guys that. Sorry. But they sound great. I'm really, really stoked about those. Anyways, look, thank you guys so much for watching. It's It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. It's actually a lot of fun to hang out with you guys. It makes this whole situation not as shitty as it should be. So, um, yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh, I, I love you all, but that that is that is my loyalty to Animals as Leaders. I can't, I can't go showing that stuff. But... I'm super excited about it, and uh, when it's out, I think you guys will be really stoked. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you soon, and uh, hopefully it will be show you random stuff, maybe me making coffee, maybe me jamming through amps and pedals, but definitely I will be showing you guys uh, the It's Only Smiles project if you want. Just leave me a comment saying that you want that, and if I get enough, then I'll do it. All right, later, dudes.